Welcome to Outside the Box Week 12. This is a Stochastic and Fantasy Points collaboration show. We're going to take a look at the tools and the data for both Stochastic and Fantasy Points to find some of the best plays out there for you this week, like we do every week. We've made some good lineups. We've made some bad lineups. Hopefully, we can finally win the Millie this week. We haven't done so. We've been trying. We're going to we're gonna go down and take, take down the Millie this week. While you're coming in, please like the video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. And hit that notification button so you can get alerts when our shows go live. Scott, how are you doing this week? I'm doing good. Uh, love this slate. The main slate after Thanksgiving. Historically, one of my most profitable uh, slates. I, I think it's just everyone else, you know, gets sidetracked by family and turkey and beer. And uh, yeah, I just I just grind away every Thanksgiving trying to maximize the edge for myself and our subscribers. So uh, yeah, it was something like nine years in a row. I had McDonald's on Thanksgiving, not this year. My, <laughs> my girlfriend actually, uh, made some chicken and with, with some of the side dishes, but, uh, did sit behind the computer all day. Uh, feel pretty good about this slate. This is a outside the box show where we, try, you know, try and be intentional about, uh, poking holes in the chalk, fading the chalk gaining leverage on the chalk, looking for some outside the box plays. But I, I don't really think we need to do that this week on a short slate like this. That's typically pretty soft. Um, I, you know, I think not as contrarian as we typically like to go, but, uh, but yeah, I think this is going to be a fun week. So you think that we don't need to avoid the chalk as much because you think, uh, because people are going to be playing the slate wrong. Or what, what do you mean by that exactly? By, uh, we don't. We, what is different about this slate, you think, than the typical I, slate? I think it's just more that there's going to be bad chalk, and like if you okay. did your research and due diligence, uh, you're going to not have that as like the optimal plays, and so you're just going to be naturally contrarian in a sense. Um, okay, that, that's kind of my read on it. Hell yeah, yeah. It was a yeah. We saw it's a ten game slate. I was I was thinking it was going to be a short slate because we have. Uh, you know, the four games have already happened, uh, but because there are no bye weeks, it's a little bit short, but not like a, an extremely short slate. Uh, so, you know, that'll that'll save us a little bit of time. And honestly, I was uh, kind of giddy this morning when I realized we don't have to worry about survivor picks anymore. I didn't have to set all I that know, up it's nice, right? the segment that nobody really cares about anyway. But we, uh, we, we Scott finally had a pick that did not go his way. So we get to stop doing survivor picks. We can jump right into this. Slate. Oh, one thing that I forgot to do is to pull up last week. And to be honest with you, Scott, I feel like... Like I don't remember anything from a week. Like it has been such a long week. I for know. Me. Um, I've been just with, with Thanksgiving. I mean, you, you say that not uh, into you're, you're not really doing the traditional Thanksgiving thing as much. I've been I've had three traditional Thanksgivings already, uh, sort of, and then also a, a cousins get together, which was like sort of a Thanksgiving thing. So I've been just like I don't know, just like not not a usual week for me. It's been been a long fun week, but but a very uh, so I'm like, I don't remember anything that happened last week, but I'm going to, yeah, and you up. juggle multiple sports. Like that's crazy to me. So, yeah. I, I mean, I'm like at this point, like I'm 90, 95% NFL. I do a little bit of NBA right now, but I don't really get into the NBA stuff until after NFL season is over. Um, I'm pulling up the main slate so we can take a look at the winning lineup from last week. I don't, I, I know that you and I didn't have anything great. Oh yeah. It was the, the Brock Purdy unstacked lineup is what took it down last week that's what it was yeah can you pull it up and show it on uh yep yep i'm going to i'm uh my my mouse was not clicking it right all right here we go i've got it pulled up now just give me one second and we can pull up here we go so this is the the millie maker winning lineup last week uh solo just like this the only lineup this person entered has yeah what are your thoughts on this lineup do you think this was a a sharp lineup a well-correlated uh sharp lineup neil I do not. I do not think this was a well-correlated sharp lineup. With apologies to Ja Russell, I mean, I know a lot of people say like, you're going to nitpick a guy who just won a million dollars. I mean, I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Um, and I can say this as as somebody who has won the Millie Maker. One, people one who win the Millie Maker. Okay. 
Scott, Scott will be right back. People who win the Millie Makers, typically, I would not say are like, they're, they're not the best players in the world in general. I'm not saying that Millie Maker winners, like you're dumb if you won the Millie Maker, obviously, but like a lot of the best players in the world have not won the Millie Maker because you just see stuff like this win uh, from time to time. There's such large contests that it's not always going to be a sharp lineup that takes down the Millie. And I think this is an example of a not particularly good lineup. I mean, uh, it does have the, the low own Khalil Shakir piece. So got to love that uh, has, you know, kind of low own Dalton Kincaid, but I'm never playing naked quarterbacks. We, we had this conversation last week. You can make a case for it. It just means that there's more things you need to get right. Like you basically need to have uh, a nine leg parlay all hit your way if you don't correlate at all. And this, as far as I can tell, is a an entirely uncorrelated lineup. I don't really see any like bring backs to any, like he's got uh two Texans players, two Bills players, no bring backs on either. So I don't mean to be insulting to uh, the person who made this lineup. I, they, they just won a million dollars. So kudos to them. But I'll, I'll, I'd say it's a lineup that I would never play. Uh, do you have any any notes on this lineup, Scott? Yeah, it was so funny just uh, hearing the pros rip this lineup apart. Like, oh, if this were me, I'd, I I wouldn't tell anyone and I'd donate it all to charity and then I'd kill myself because right. this is the worst lineup ever that won a million dollars. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, you're not wrong. The only thing I'll say is uh, Brock Purdy was my number one quarterback of the week. Devin Singletary, Brian Robinson were my top two running backs of the week. Uh, DJ Moore, Tank Dell, Tyree Kill were my top three wide receiver plays of the week. Khalil Sh- Shakir, I did write up. Um, and then Kincaid, like, he was he was fine. He was one of my top whatever tight end. And so, like, this is basically like a cash lineup. Like this guy basically read your read your article and just played all of Scott's favorite plays and didn't worry about correlation or anything like that. I mean, I, I wasn't even too like w- I'm sure there were other sites that were that were right. Like everyone knew that, you know, Tank Dell and Tyreek Hill were great plays. The thing is, though, this is an outside the box uh, show. And like that's how I approached my own GPP. So like that that was the cash lineup. But uh, I'm intentionally playing against that for tournaments. And so like weeks like this where the chalk just Uber smashes, like it's not going to be our weeks. Uh, luckily there haven't been too many just chalk onslaught weeks. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's all I kind of have to say about that. Like, I, I, I guess it makes sense to just play a cash, <laughs> play your cash lineup in like one cheat GPP every week. Cause you never know. I don't, I don't know. Apparently dink, Drew Dinkmeyer won the Millie that way a number of years ago, but um, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm I'm with you. I think generally, you know, playing a ch- super chalky, uncorrelated lineup uh, is not the right approach. But you know, maybe one out of every, I don't know, 200 slates or so, or 50 slates. Uh, yeah, you'll you'll get super lucky and win a million dollars. Now I wonder, like, I wonder if this was just straight up. This person is a cash game player, but wants to always play their cash game in a GPP. That wouldn't be shocking to me if I heard that. The only real surprising piece from this, from a cash game perspective, would be Khalil Shakir. Like outside of Khalil Shakir, this is just a straight up cash game. Or maybe he, he ran his uh, cash game lineup and just did one pivot or something to Khalil Shakir. I don't know. It's it's, it's not a lineup that I would play. I don't want to like you know shit on this guy's millie maker winning lineup i know that's uh it's always a hesitation but yeah this is clearly not a lineup that i would play um i think that that is a a good uh you know synopsis of this lineup we also i actually haven't even looked at what uh alex baker played last week because well i believe it was last week did alex baker win the millie yeah he won uh what millie was this the 44 44 so the the big dollar wow. millie so i'm kind of curious to see i think this is alex's second millie maker win i know he has a billion different uh six figure wins but he i think i think this is his second millie maker win let's take a look at alex's lineup because my guess is it's going to be more along the line yeah it's got uh cj stroud with robert woods tank dell and devin singletary that's kind of interesting he has the low he does that a lot the the running back with his stack yeah he'll do like dub stacks plus the running back he does that a lot He's also got the correlation of Saquon Barkley with the Giants defense that that really did him well. Um, he's got the bring back with Trey McBride, Evan Ingram in this one and Tyreek Hill. So really strong lineup. I know, I know you were not a huge fan of Evan Ingram last week. I ended up, uh, I, I, I mean, he didn't scored do it 6. Intentionally. points. Yeah. He didn't do anything for him. Um, I played a ton of Evan Ingram unintentionally last week because I <laughs> gave myself, I, uh, I think it was last week that I gave myself about five minutes to do my 
like very, very little time. And I just like last second, I adjusted some other tight end to have a lower projection. And just as a result, like my final run didn't even notice until after it locked. I was like, oh shit, I have like 50% Evan Ingram. And I, I thought it was a fine play, but he wasn't somebody that I wanted in 50% of my lineup. So I kind of screwed up my process last week and that didn't go so well with Evan Ingram. But in a line in a, in a contest like this where it's uh the 44 44 like 600 total entries you don't need to be perfect you don't need to nail every single pick so he was fine with having just seven points out of evan ingram nine points out of trey mcbride uh he had enough smash plays that it didn't end up mattering for alex uh so congrats to the two millie maker wins uh do you have any, any other notes on this other than the the running back with the stack um uh, no yeah, it looks like a pretty standard. He's got, you know, the bring back's got some added correlation here. Really nice. Oh, Sa- Saquon plus Giants D was, was sharp. I, I wasn't on that at all. And it was, yeah. you know, as it was going off, I'm like, yeah, that's that was a sharp call. Yeah, that was, I, I, I said it last week. I was like, I, I want to be completely out on the Giants offense with the veto at quarterback. But I said with uh, the, the Giants playing the commanders, that was the one week that I was thinking about playing Saquon. I don't know if I ended up playing I didn't play a ton of Saquon. I know that he was, I was thinking about it only because the matchup with the commanders, obviously the giants defense against Sam Howell makes a lot of sense when he's getting sacked, you know, what, five times a game, something like that. He has like 13 more sacks coming into this week than any other quarterback sacks taken. Um, So that made a lot of sense. Yeah. It's something that in retrospect, wish I had done more correlating Saquon Barkley and the giants defense look, looks fantastic there. Um, I think we can move on and just talk about this week's slate. That's not good. You ready? For yeah, that? let's do it. All right. We'll start with quarterbacks uh, and we can start with, uh, I'll sort by top stacks here for stochastic. We have uh, the Rams really stand out. Actually, no, sorry. We, we always start with looking at ownership. So we want to look at the, the chalkier quarterbacks to start. What do you think of Trevor Lawrence getting 13% ownership? Jalen Hurts getting 12% ownership. Uh, we could even throw in Gardner Minshew getting about 10%. Do you like these players at this ownership or are there other stacks you prefer? Um, yeah, I'll just tell you what, what I have personally. Um, I think, I think Jalen hurts, Josh Allen are just like, obviously the best quarterback plays of the slate in a game that should go nuclear. Um, and apparently you guys have Josh Allen at 5.7%. That, that seems like stupidly low. Um, I thought heading into this week that it's like, oh God, Jalen Hurts is going to be 15% owned. Josh Allen's going to be 15% owned. And we're going to have to, this entire show today, we would have to talk about like how we're playing against that. And because that's not the case, um, that, that really gets me excited about it. Um, Josh Allen has like a phenomenal matchup. The Eagles defense has been getting shredded by, by quarterbacks, a uh, great spot for the wide receivers. Um, and so right now you're looking over last five weeks, you're looking yeah. over last five weeks, uh, Buffalo's defense too ranks bottom seven against quarterbacks. You're right there at the top. Uh, and I don't think that's a coincidence. They've just suffered so many injuries to that defense. Uh, that I think it's a favorable matchup for both quarterbacks. Both quarterbacks are like essentially tied easily the most productive quarterbacks in fantasy this year. Um, they're both a, a, a little banged up, but it like doesn't really seem to matter. Uh, Allen's running more uh, in recent weeks, which is nice. Um I think with stacks too, like obviously Allen is so much easier to fit uh, with, I think, you know, Kincaid clearly supplanting Gabe Davis as the number two, but Shakir like is a legitimately strong value. He's, he's, he's running a route on slightly over two thirds of the team's dropbacks. Uh, he's, he's productive. He, he's making splash plays. He's playing well. He ranks third best among all slot wide receivers in, in yards per route run from the slot. Um, and then her, and then her side, I think people are going to miss this, but I, I think you could dub stack him now in a way that you couldn't when Goddard was healthy. It just really condenses things. And I like Devonta Smith a lot. And obviously we know AJ Brown, uh, you know, had that, I don't know, six straight weeks of 25 plus DraftKings fantasy points. His, his numbers suffer without Dallas Goddard. 
Uh, and it actually like is a major benefit to Devonta Smith. There's also like some schematic matchup stuff, uh, heavily pointing in Smith's favor. Um, I like both guys. Uh, I also think you can dub stack them in a way you, you couldn't a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I really like those two quarterbacks. I really don't have any interest in, uh, Trevor Lawrence. I am a known Trevor Lawrence hater. Uh, it's just, he had the second best ever game of his career last week and it was his only good game this year. And so like, I'm not going to play that, you know, at chalk the week after it happened. I just, I just never do that, but I love shroud. I think shroud's an awesome play, especially we see this in, in tournaments, right? So often there's the chalky quarterback. The opposing quarterback is far less highly owned just play them because they're correlated together. Everyone likes this game environment. Just play them together. But you can go back to schedule adjusted. Shroud has the much much better matchup in comparison to Lawrence. Um, you have uh, way more stackable upside with Shroud, I believe. You know, like four thirty plus DraftKings fantasy point games, where like Kirk has a seriously overrated ceiling. Evan Ingram has a seriously overrated ceiling. Um, uh, so Jacksonville right there and you see like a great spot for the wide receivers, which is like the whole, you know, point to playing shroud, I think is like tank Dell, amazing play. Nico Collins, really good play at lower, lower ownership. Um, Schultz also as well, uh, in the mix. Um, whereas with, you know, Jacksonville, it's really spread out and, you know, Lawrence isn't doing as much through the air. Um, I think you can get away with just playing Ridley in tournaments rather than like a chalky Kirk or a chalky Engram who really don't have too much touchdown upside. Uh, can we go back to the the other page we were looking at? Yep. Minshew, I like a lot. Um, I think I think Pittman's like an amazing play. I think Downs is right there with him as an amazing play. I honestly might prefer downs, but we'll have to see what ownership looks like, but they're just both awesome plays. That's an easy dub stack. Uh, it's easy leverage off of Jonathan Taylor, who looks like the chalkiest play of the slate. Um, and, uh, those would probably be, well, there's a close fourth, uh, Kyler Murray, I think is one of the best GPP quarterback plays of the slate. Um, the Rams are, Except for that Dak Prescott game, the Rams were a tough matchup against quarterbacks, but they've been getting shredded by by quarterbacks on the ground. Uh, fifth most schedule adjusted. The, they've only faced two hyper mobile quarterbacks, Anthony Richardson, Jalen Hurts. They both had fifty plus rushing yards and a rushing touchdowns against him. He's just way too cheap. He's he's the QB six over the last two weeks. I think he's playing well. He's he's at least running uh, and looks great with his legs. Um, so, mm-hmm. so I like, I like those four quarterbacks. And then, and then after that, I think there's a, a, a teardrop where it gets a, a little bit trickier. All right. So, so your four, once again, were, um, Allen and Hertz. Kyler yeah. Murray really, really want to be heavy on. Oh yeah. Okay. Really want to be heavy on them. Uh, and then Minshew, Kyler and shroud. Minshew, so that's okay. my five. Minshew. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so those are, and that was honestly, I had the exact same first instinct as you, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that. My first thought was, wow, Josh Allen against this Eagles. Like, when the Bills are going to be in a close game against a, a team with a bad secondary, to me, Josh Allen was the first player who stood out to me. And then, yeah, as, as I look at schedule adjusted, it's actually a great spot for both sides, both quarterbacks. Uh, I don't think of the Bills as being a great spot for opposing quarterbacks, but yeah, looking at schedule adjusted for the, for, uh, the past five weeks. So getting both uh allen and hurts at reasonable ownership i mean we have allen at what do we have it at at 5.7 percent ownership that does look great to me uh hurts getting a little bit more ownership at about 12 percent, but uh those those did stand out to me as some of the best plays as well um yeah i, I noticed that last week was really the the first time it's hurt you to, to not have trevor lawrence so uh, and you you were still on calvin ridley so you were even though you didn't like the quarterback you liked the one pass catcher who got there for the jaguars last week um, and I guess we can, I guess we'll talk about that more once we get to wide receivers, whether we think that that's going to continue being a thing where Zay Jones being available seems to help Kelvin Ridley, uh, whether that's a real thing or maybe it's noise. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get to wide receivers. Um, any thoughts on Mahomes against the Raiders? 
Yeah, I, I, I think uh, so. I gave you my top five. He would yeah. definitely be six for me. Okay. Um, I was hoping he would come in a little bit less uh, highly owned. You guys have him at nine percent. I, th- I think we were a little lower on him, and but um, yeah, it's just I, I was I was banking on he flopped in prime time. It looked so ugly with like nine drops from the receivers that everyone would be off of him. But it's like yeah, like nine drops isn't going to happen every single week. You, you, you give him, you know, just, you know, they catch five of those where it literally hits them in their hands. Then he would have scored 28 fantasy points at an absolute minimum. Uh, and then this matchup, like I legitimately think this is like an easy top three matchup. Once you remove Max Crosby from the equation, Yeah, Crosby is who I would have given my DPOY vote to, uh, leads the league in uh, pressures, but also like pressure market share where like he's been the entirety of this defense that wasn't even particularly good to begin with. And you've seen this in some primetime games where it really feels like he's influencing this game. Like with it, you take him out, like you're, lo- you're t- the Raiders are losing by 19 points instead of nine or whatever it is. I I really think that's, that's massive. Uh, So I think this is a great, great spot for him. Um, Not to mention, I mean, with Kadarius, Tony and, um, and Miko Hardman out, like obviously like that doesn't help the quarterback, but it helps you in choosing who you're going to pair with the quarterback. Cause it's going to be hopefully like maybe Rasheed Rice is a real thing this week. Maybe he actually plays significant snaps gets significant volume with you know a couple just just removing it's not actually moving removing that much because it's not like Kadarius Tony and Michael Hardman were every down players or even I don't think either of them were getting 50 percent of snaps and in close to that but it helps a little bit to have fewer options to go to in the passing game so um that I think to me it, like actually helps a little bit removing those guys removing options that you can compare with them does, does that make sense yeah you could say the same thing about McKinnon too now you know. yeah oh good point I forgot about McKinnon 30% snap share, 35% inside the red zone. Uh, definitely helps Pacheco, but uh, you know maybe it makes Justin Watson a stronger play or Rasheed Rice uh, at much lower ownership or you know just Kelsey being the guy. You know, for sure, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yep. Um, and Stafford was not one of the, the players you mentioned. I think we need to talk about Stafford. We already, uh, somebody in chat already mentioned, yeah, Swaggy says, Still trying to figure out why people keep stacking Stafford when he's never had a ceiling game in like three years, and not to mention he's had one twenty fantasy points game all season long. Yeah, he has not been great. It's been like surprising how bad he has been from a fantasy perspective, given how good Nakua was early on. Uh, Cup, you know, hasn't really come around all that much at all. Um, but the, our tools love Stafford once again this week, so I'm going to be going back to Stafford. Um, do you have? Uh, do you dislike the Stafford play? Getting six percent ownership. Are you with Swaggy there? Or are you willing to play some Stafford? Uh, no, I'm. I'm with him. Uh, so Stafford's this this sort of guy who just like he plays through everything. You don't really know what's going on. Uh, he plays through everything, but he doesn't play particularly well. He's just like the grittiest guy of all time, where he's like, you know. Uh, arm is falling off and he's just like, you know, whatever, just out there chucking it. Uh, but yeah, you saw that in the numbers last week as well. He was like the second worst quarterback of the week by accurate throw rate. Uh, and that's going to have like a trickle down effect on the receivers. Like I said, I, I really think Kyler is the way to play that. Uh, I, I like him a lot. I think he's an awesome play. Uh, I think he's getting slept on a little bit. Uh, but yeah, with Stafford, it's the injury risk. It's also the, um, I mean, cups, cups, not healthy. Uh, and, and he wasn't getting it done anyway. Uh, personally, I think Kyler's probably the best running back play of the slate for tournaments. So, uh, I would Wait. just kind of hope that it's, it's the same thing we've seen where he's Kyrie, Uber, Kyrie Williams. Okay. <laughs> Uber bell cow who gets all the, the touchdowns inside the red zone. Like that's a thing to Mahomes is he is so greedy inside the red zone. He only has two touchdowns outside of the red zone this year. Will Levis has twice as many. Wow. And that's like always been the case with Mahomes, which is why like Pacheco is typically over own. But, uh, with this this Sean McVay offense, you kind of see the opposite. Like Ty, Todd Gurley, why he was such a fantasy beast, and Kyron Williams kind of been in that role. So that's that's really hurt Stafford back when he was healthy, and you know now he's not healthy and Cup's not healthy. So I think you can get away with just Kyler, and then if you wanted exposure, it would be Kyron or or Puka. 
All right, I'm going to force you to make one one stack of Stafford this week so that oh, you have boy. so that you have some exposure, some some right, reason right. to not That's, completely yeah, hate him. Because like I, you know, just just I, I trust the tool, so I'm I'm going to be playing some Stafford. I'm not going to go too crazy with it, but like just given the positive leverage, I feel like I need to play some Stafford. Trust the tools because they have done me well in the past. So so you and I will build one so that you have at least that one lineup exposure to Stafford. Um, I get it though. Like he, yeah, you're, you're right. Stafford has just been not that great. It feels like he, t- to me, it feels like he should be able to. And I've I've tried it multiple times. I've tried the double stack with Puka and Cooper Cup, and it's never worked out. It, it has not worked out. Uh, I think I'm gonna try it one more time this week because they have such a great matchup with the Cardinals. Um, that I'm at least hopeful that. Yeah, I mean, that's no doubt right. Like, that is an amazing matchup for him. Uh, It's also an amazing matchup for Kyron, but but yeah, Yeah. great spot. Uh, I mean, you can both get there. And uh, according to our ownership project, we're only seeing 3%. So, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, he might go even lower owned than than we're thinking. Nice. All right, well, that that is heartening. That's good to hear. All right, um, let me see. I feel like there were a couple others that I wanted to ask you about um i know that i want i want your opinion on will levis here because i feel like he's been all over the place he had that i mean he had a great game to start i don't know that he's had a great game since then but nice matchup here with carolina any interest in will levis yeah i brought this up on uh our show and i i think johnny uh, john proctor dfs goat uh i think he like laughed me laughed at me for it but like i i can't stop thinking about it and it's, uh, I think Derek Henry, like, so I just said, Kyron's probably the best GPP running back play of the week. Uh, Derek Henry's probably number two, like excluding like the obvious chalk chalk plays at, at running back. Um, yeah. And I think he just goes nuclear this week. And it, it makes me think like, I wonder if Derek Henry's pos- positively correlated to Will Levis in the same way he was with, with Ryan Tannehill. Like that was just such a weird thing where, uh, all of Tannehill's spike weeks were also Derrick Henry spike weeks. Maybe, you know, it's something to do with, uh, you know, the offense revolving around play action, or maybe it's just uh, uh, Henry getting them down, like, or finally sustaining drives and advancing into the red zone. Um, so I, I don't think I ended up writing up Will Levis, but that is something I gave some some serious thought to. Um, and obviously, like, no one's playing DeAndre Hopkins either. Um, no one feeling's going to be low owned as well. So there might be more upside to this game than, than people think. Yeah. I, to me, it's an interesting play. I like the volatility there in Will Levis and obviously love the matchup. So I am, I'm going with your initial instinct and playing a little bit of Will Levis. And then the only other quarterback that I'm sort of, uh, interested in here is, uh, DTR, any interest in DTR, just because to me, Denver's defense has been bad enough that I'm willing to try a running quarterback against them. Do you have any interest in DTR? Uh, no, but I, I might not have a good reason why. I, I just kind of, yeah, zero touchdowns, four interceptions through two starts. Uh, only not a believer in the talent. Twenty-two rushing yards per game. Uh, yeah, yeah, not not really on it. All right, yeah, it's to me, it's it's just like a, a large field flyer. Maybe you can get it done. Um, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wish casting a little bit because I have him in my super flex league where all my quarterbacks got hurt. So I have to start who is available. Oh, I'm like, I could see right. it against, I could see it against the Broncos. So I picked him up. Um, so yeah, I'm probably just wish casting a little bit there with DTR. I don't think, I think I've finally fallen off. I'm not going to keep going back to the Bryce young thing, even though he's got a matchup with Tennessee where theoretically it could work out. Uh, I think I, I think I'm off that train. Um, any, any other quarterbacks you want to talk about? Um, no, I don't think so. Baker's fine. I, I just personally prefer Minshew, but like it, it's close. I, I get it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a, a great point, uh, from Jeremiah. I would probably play Tommy De- DeVito over, uh, uh, or Bailey Zappi, maybe even over DTR. Well, you're wrong. Come on. Right. Bailey Zappi. Come on. Scott. I don't know. You I don't, don't mean know. It. Yeah, probably not. Mean. Probably not. Probably not. I could see. I could see Tommy DeVito just because we have seen him do it once. No, I, against New England, I, I don't think I could make that. I, I just mean um, like two really bad, potentially tanking, tanking defense teams. Yeah. Okay, I get that. I get that. All right. Uh, yeah, we got to make sure that Taylor Swift is there. Otherwise, we can't play Kelsey. Everybody knows that. Uh, she's not going to be there. She's not going to be there. I think she had a, a tour date thing. 
Oh, <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad we have Scott here for that kind of insight. Like, you're I'll not just coming to Scott for the football details. You're also getting the inside info there. All right, we will uh, move on. Talk about some running backs. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll refresh just to make sure that I have the most updated stuff in the boom bust tool when we start. Oh, look, it was just updated an hour ago. That's good to see. Um, it's going to continue, obviously, to be updated as we get more news throughout the yeah guys breaking she has a concert in sao paulo brazil on sunday so uh all right no, scratch. No t-, t swift uh at the game scratch mahomes can't play mahomes with no no t swift we know. don't have we can't play travis kelsey then what's the point of playing mahomes uh that's brutal all right um We'll talk about some running backs. Uh, Scott, do you have any kind of uh, Black Friday sales going on right now? Any Anything to, to note about uh, sales at Fantasy Points? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right now we're 80% off uh, for Ooh, the rest of the right. season. There's still like, I don't know, 10 or 11 slates left if you if you count the playoffs and the Super Bowl. Um, so yeah, $30 for a Fantasy Points premium subscription gives you access to all my articles gets you into our discord and then fantasy points data what you're looking at here we just added two brand new tools uh that's only 50 dollars. that's 75 percent off so if you want to try us out this would be a good week for it yeah that's uh 80 percent off is, is quite the deal there to, to get access to all your stuff yeah that is and, and that's for the rest of the year you said yeah but like i i'll, I'll give this away maybe i shouldn't I, we're gonna do a super early bird uh, which gets you the remainder of this year free. And then next year at the the cheapest discount we offer, that's going to be in like two weeks. So if you want to wait for that, you could do that too. Oh, Scott, that is, that is, I, I'm such a bad right there. sales. <laughs> you could take yeah. advantage of this deal or we have a better one coming. I know. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, yeah. Well, I, I brought this up. I, I brought that up for two points selfishly for what one of my reasons being selfish the first one being i i think you have great tools here i've been i use the fantasy points data suite constantly i've been i've started using the uh schedule adjusted fantasy points per game stuff as my go-to for like looking at matchups so love love the tools you guys have but i also selfishly wanted to uh to tell people about our own deal at stochastic which mm-hmm. we have 50 percent off all of our packages for black friday that includes our sims packages so if you've been you know hearing about sims you're interested in sims products but you don't want to pay the full price. Uh, now is the best time. I don't think we're ever going to have it for at least uh, in in the in the near term future. We're not going to have fifty better than fifty percent off. So it's a fantastic time to check out what I think are the most powerful DFS tools in the industry. The Sims are available, uh, and you can get weekly or monthly. You can take advantage of the full Sims package, or uh, we have a, a pared down version where you can't run quite as many Sims. Everything is 50% off right now. And the links are in the description of this video if you want to check it out. So I just I had to shout that out. When, when you have 50% off for Black Friday, I feel like that's the kind of deal that, you know, I don't usually shout everything out, but I feel like that's the kind of deal that you kind of have to shout those ones out when they are available. So yeah, great deals. And you can find the Fantasy Points. I mean, you can find the website for Fantasy Points uh, in the description of this video. You can find all of our deals. And on, on Fantasy Points, Scott, if I remember correctly, you just go, oh yeah, plans. It's just right at the top of the page. Oh, I appreciate you. you pointing that out. Yeah, thank you. Fantasypoints.com. Yeah, so uh, you can find our tools, the Fantasy Points tools, all of that is available uh, in the description of this video. All right, let's talk about some running backs out and I have it sorted here by ownership. And we have Jonathan Taylor as being mega chalk this week, 32% projected ownership. Uh, looks like our, our optimal rate has come down because we had really uh, positive leverage on Taylor earlier. Now he looks like he's just a neutral play here. We then have Isaiah Pacheco now at 21% ownership with McKinnon out and then Saquon Barkley, 15%. Let's start with those top three. What do you think of Taylor, Pacheco and Barkley at these ownership levels? Um, yeah, so, so Jonathan Taylor, I think is like an absolute must play in cash. You can say he's the best running back play of the slate. I think that's right. Um, you know, we were waiting for him to get this full on bell cow workload and he finally got it, uh, last two games, really just like insane usage. And this has been one of the most valuable backfields in fantasy. Uh, so if he like maintains this sort of usage and the backfield is this, uh, voluminous, whatever. Uh, I think he's staring at the best volume of any player in fantasy, including wide receivers. But like this is the outside the box show and he's 33% owned according to you guys, yep. uh, which means if he has a bad game, you immediately wipe out a third of the field, giving yourself a massive advantage. 
And so it's important to look at ways that Jonathan Taylor could, could flop. And I, I think there's easy arguments you could make. One of which is that he hasn't played particularly well this year. He's, he's been pretty inefficient, particularly on the ground. And this is a brutal matchup. If you want to pull up schedule adjusted, look at Tampa Bay against running backs this year. They haven't given up a single rushing touchdown to a running back all year. Instead, they're a massive pass funnel. Um, massive yeah, pass please. funnel, giving up a ton of production to the wide receivers. You know, I like Michael Pittman. You know, I like Josh Downs. And so, um, again, really like Minshew doubles as leverage off of Taylor. I think if you wanted to just fade Taylor uh, you and not worry about a Minshew, like you could certainly go that route. Uh, I think we are approaching the point in ownership where uh, you can get away from him. What, what do yeah. you think, Neil? Yeah, honestly, I I am glad to see that we now have him as neutral to slightly negative leverage here because my first instinct when I saw 32% ownership going to Jonathan Taylor was, well, that's an easy fade just because it is a tough matchup with Tampa Bay. He has not been great this year. I get the other side of it is that he is only 6,900, uh, which is a great price tag for him. And you look at the volume. So I, I feel like it's neutral seems about right. Like I think that I think that it's nil. No, like 32% ownership is about where he should be. Like he is objectively 6900 is too cheap um for a guy who is, you know, historically as talented as Jonathan Taylor getting the volume that he's getting in this offense that has been so good on the ground. But then there is the, the other side of it of like yeah, he's playing against Tampa Bay. It's not an easy spot at all. Um and 69 like it's not like a it can't fail kind of price tag at 6900. So, um I think Honestly, I, I feel like the ownership is uh, and, and the optimal odds. That's seems about right to me. Like, is that that's it's kind of like what you were saying too, right? Like, you can paint a great picture for a rosy picture. Like, yeah, it's a great spot. He's got great opportunity, great price. But then on the other side, it is just a tough matchup for Jonathan Taylor. Maybe they do it through the air. Um, yeah, this this all seems about right to me. Yeah, I like I I think thirty three percent is is right, but I I also think like I'm gonna try and come under that just because there's there's more upside uh, to be had in like a guy owned on a third of all lineups flopping. But I don't know. I'm not the I'm not the game theory expert. You you are Neil. So well, I mean, um, so so I mean, game theory expertise. Uh, looking at individual players is like you have to think about the the lineup as a whole. Like you can't just play a full on chalk lineup with Jonathan Taylor. That doesn't mean you oh, can't right, make right. plus EV lineups that have Jonathan Taylor in it. You just have to factor in like he's getting a ton of ownership. If you're playing a few players are getting a ton of ownership. You got to offset that with some contrarian plays. So like in a vacuum, I think yeah, he's he's a totally fine play but you need to factor in the fact that he is 33 percent owned if you're playing jonathan taylor you gotta have somebody in your lineup probably who's going to be pretty contrarian although I, last week we i guess we, we did have the one we had khalil shakir in the winning lineup last week it was mostly just jam the chalk uh, right. that won it last week but more like it's easier to win if you hit on the guys who are not owned because if you if you hit on jonathan taylor great you've reduced a field of two hundred thousand to now seventy thousand lineups you're competing with so it's like it you know it's it's great like if, if you get that piece right but it doesn't reduce the field of, of players uh like you would if it's somebody who's one percent owned where you're really bringing down the field size of lineups that have that player in it so yeah he's, he's a totally fine play you just need to uh you know maybe find some contrarian plays to play around him in some lineups um what about pacheco sorry yeah you have awesome play this is like absolutely correct it, it should like cash lineups it should be uh click taylor click pacheco that's that's right he's generally over owned in tournaments for what i described is is uh mahomes being so greedy inside the red zone hogging touchdowns doesn't typically get a lot of target volume like i think he's only cleared one the 100 yard bonus once uh but i mean already a great value you could stack him with chiefs defense which is one of the best uh, defense plays of the slate by far. Uh, Jarek McKinnon's out, so that that's thirty percent of the snaps, thirty five percent of the snaps inside the red zone. Ceh is not a thing. He he had, doesn't have a single snap on third down all season. And then you take out Max Crosby, who leads the league in run stops, is the entire like the only good run defender on the Raiders, and is like so good that it's actually made the Ra Raiders like okay against the run or maybe just below average instead of dead last so yeah this is now like a top two matchup um 
they should they should absolutely curb stomp the Raiders. Should be amazing field position, plenty of red zone drives. Uh, great play, no issue there. Sa- Saquon Barkley, I do want to quibble with for sure. Like first of all, I think like Kyron Williams sh- absolutely should be drawing Pacheco levels of ownership. Uh, I think Derrick Henry should be uh, right there, uh, a little bit behind him, but like within that range, I, I'd much rather play those two over Saquon. Saquon is just like, okay, like he didn't really do anything. He's still like dealing with an ankle injury actually uh, until last week. And I don't like playing these guys who did nothing and then smashed the most recent week, that hindsight bias. Uh, he is, you know, really talented. He's Saquon Barkley. He is getting like, He's the entirety of the offense, getting a ton of volume. It's like a, but, uh, you know, it's not an amazing matchup on paper. It is an offense that's implied for just 15 total points. Uh, so it makes me really question his upside. Um, I don't really love that one, but like, I mean, he's not a bad play. Yeah. That he, he was the one, as I was looking through the high owned running backs that to me stood out as like, yeah, I, I'm probably not playing Saquon this week. I, I think I might have like I'm not I'm not MME and I'd probably have some if I were playing 150 lineups. Um, but I'm probably if I'm playing 30 lineups, I'll probably have zero of Saquon this week just because I don't know what what is the upside in that offense. Like I, I guess we saw it last week, but in, in a typical matchup, that's not the commanders after trading their two best defensive players. Like in a typical game, I feel like it's asking a lot for Saquon to pay off that. 73 or to put up a score that you really need to have like you can put up a score that you want to have but i don't see, really see saquon putting up 35 plus too often in most matchups when tommy devito is the quarterback um, yeah before that he before last week he didn't score a touchdown in in six of seven games only hit the 100 yard bonus once uh really just absolutely not a ceiling guy for you but you know the two receiving touchdowns last week is going to stick in everyone's mind. Um, this could be a slot fest game though. Just like two teams who may or may not be trying to get a top three draft pick, but um, on paper, it's also like not really a good matchup for Berkeley. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll keep talking about some of it. So, so Jen asks, and I feel like this is kind of an interesting talking about ask in a Minshew Pittman stack, would you rather run it back with white or Evans? Uh, interesting because white is now questionable as of today, a uh, Saturday up uh, downgraded to questionable for this game. So I think uh, to me, if, if white is playing uh, certainly uh, probably my favorite of the two, if, if he is playing, but I think he's truly questionable. What, do you have any kind of read on whether white is going to play or what you would want to do if white doesn't play or if he does play, I guess. Yeah. I wish I did, to be honest, I, I should have spent more time on this before our show. I, was, I don't know. I just didn't want to deal with it. So I guess I'm saving it for later tonight, but uh, yeah, my, my cash running backs were going to be uh Taylor Pacheco, Rashad white. I thought he was a really good value. Great matchup. Uh, maybe not the highest ceiling, but he's just like so dependable because you know, he plays every snap. He gets those targets. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know what to do now. I don't know how serious this injury. No one does. We'll probably get some good news on Saturday night where it's like, oh, it doesn't look to be too serious or like uh, we're going to have to wait and see. He's going to test it before a game, but the te- team is pessimistic. Uh, Chase Edmonds, we we wouldn't really know for sure, but I, I do think most likely scenarios, he kind of steps right into like, 90% of the Rashad white role. They're like comparable players where they're better pass catchers than runners. Um, and like, obviously that's an amazing role. So, uh, he's definitely in play as a, a value. You don't, this isn't really a slate where you need a ton of value, but like he would definitely jump up into that, that value range for me. Yeah. You can see here, uh, over the p- people, a lot of discussion of who would be the running back. And I, my assumption would be Chase Edmonds also just looking at the use of this is just from the past two weeks, but Chase Edmonds, I mean, Rashad White, 98 snaps, Chase Edmonds, 30, and then Sean Tucker has one snap over that span. So it appears that Chase Edmonds has been playing as the running back behind Rashad White. I feel like he could step into the Rashad White role pretty easily. Like, I don't think he's a super talented running back, but he can catch the ball. Uh, he can, you know, take on some workload. So, I think if Rashad White were out, 
I'd have interest in Chase Edmonds. If Rashad White is in and not limited in any way, I'd have interest in Rashad White. Um, it sounds like we're kind of similar. Like you, you have some interest in a 4,300 uh, Chase Edmonds, but he wouldn't be like a smash play for you. If, he if might Rashad be. White a, he, is out. he honestly might be a smash play. If Rashad I'll, White is out. Okay. Yeah, I'll have something for Discord tomorrow morning. Okay, so you're going to have to keep thinking about because, yeah, 4,300, like the price tag is really low. It is a solid matchup with the Colts. Uh, if we look at. He would probably be a smash play. He would probably. Okay. All right. There, I mean, there's definitely uncertainty there. We we can't say for, for certain, you know, it's not going to be a committee, but I, I don't think it would be. Yeah, Colts I, giving I, up the third most fantasy points per game, schedule adjusted fantasy points per game to running backs over the past five weeks. So it'll be a great spot for whoever is the starting running back right. for Tampa Bay. And we're making the assumption that it's, I, I guess it, it would be a smash play with some risk to it because we don't know for sure that he would take on that bell car role. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, at that price tag, though, is there really True. a lot of risk? Because uh, he, he'll be RB1 at least. And and I do think like he would probably, they would probably just go the full-on bell cow route. Yep. Um, anyway. Uh, p- people today keep on wanting to talk about the Bears and the and the Ravens game. Neither of those games are on the main slate. Um, Khalil Herbert will be valued for like season-long stuff, but uh, the Bears are on Monday Night Football. Uh, earlier, today, everybody wanted to talk about the Ravens. I'm like, they're on they're on Sunday Night Football, so we we can't unfortunately we can't take advantage of them on these slates. But yeah, those are uh, some some interesting plays in those games. All right, um, yeah, it is a good point. Like he is cheap enough that like, what's the downside? Like assuming assuming that Chase Evans isn't going to lose the role he's had recently, he'll at least score some fantasy points. And for 4,300, you don't need a ton. Um, okay. Uh, Derek Henry, somebody that you wanted to talk about. Uh, I also want you to I want your opinion on Ty J Spears as long as let's, let's, uh, loop them in together. Ty J Spears with Derek Henry, just because I was looking at the, uh, the bell car report and it's obviously a, a great spot for whoever, a uh, great spot for running backs for the Titans and Ty J Spears playing 53.6% of snaps over the past two games, uh, running routes on 35% of dropbacks. So I almost feel like there's a case to be made for a cheap Ty J Spears as well as a like kind of off the radar type play. Um, but it sounded like you, you have more interest in Derrick Henry. I'll just, I'll open it up to you. What would you have to say about, uh, Derrick Henry? Yeah, I really don't think there's any upside to Spears. Like you'll, you'll see he'll out snap Henry, but it's really mostly empty snaps at like empty calorie snaps where he's just pass blocking you don't get fantasy points for pass blocking beyond that it's like no more than five carries and anywhere between three to five targets um which like i I just don't see the upside in that um but derrick henry i think like obviously this has been a disappointing year but if you like break out his production in wins versus losses he's the same player he's always been which is like a guy who is a high end RB one and wins and he's a mid range RB two and losses. Um, he's because he doesn't catch passes, but he's amazing on the ground. He's the most game script dependent player in like fantasy history. And I see this as a game that the Titans should win. Uh, they're 3.5 point favorites, but it's also the nuts matchup. Uh, if you want to go back to schedule adjusted, this is the second best possible matchup for running backs on the ground. Uh, all rush. Wait, click on rush. Click on rush. Gotcha. Running backs on the ground or third best, third best. Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, for, for the Titans. So um, yeah, I'm top three matchup. Good game script. Finally, feels like this is this is the this might be the last week to play to play derrick henry and uh luckily you know the price came down considerably he's super boomer bust for sure but um you know at this price tag i kind of want to lean more into that that boom on a week that's kind of uh kind of tricky to find you know players with a gpp winning potential or as jm to win says had to have it scores you uh i know derrick henry has some like later on in the season splits he gets significantly better is that anything do you have any notes on like yeah i, like, I, like tweet, I yeah i something? tweeted that out like pre pre post thanksgiving or or d d hember december something like that. yeah yeah, yeah. um right. i don't know i i think some of it is you know uh in the snow you lean more run heavy some of it is like defenses 
get banged up, the uh, wear and tear and all that. Um, there might be something small to that. I, I don't know. It doesn't really factor in the equation for me. Okay. Not, not something that you're not the reason that you like Derek Henry, but you know, obviously it doesn't hurt if the yeah. splits are there for him. Um, all right. Uh, several, several other running backs that, uh, I, I know you want to talk about Kyron Williams. You've, you've talked about him a little bit already. Oh, it looks like we, we updated from earlier in the day. We had him at 1% ownership. I was like, there's no way that's going to hold this. <laughs> this looks more realistic for Kyron Williams. How do you feel about, uh, Kyron Williams at 13% ownership? Yeah, I, I think that's still way too low. I, I think he's one of the one of the best plays of the slate. Look at what he was doing prior to injury. Uh, he ranked first in snap share, t- uh, top six in XFP, top three in fantasy points per game, 18.5. Those numbers look better too if you exclude week one, I think, where he, he was still kind of splitting work with Cam Akers. And like, from that point on, he was basically in the Todd Gurley role. He gets an easy top five matchup. Um and like, if you, if you listen to the press conferences with, with Sean McVay, the full quotes, it really seems like he's like, yeah, if he doesn't go back to his typical 95% snap share, it's going to be 90%. I, and I think people are reading it the wrong way. Ultimately, it like, doesn't matter what McVay says because actions speak louder than words. And the actions were he cut Daryl Henderson, uh, and he kept, the running back who contributes to special teams. Like I think we're going right back to the Todd Gurley workload, top five matchup uh, running back who is producing like a top five fantasy running back. He's not priced like it. Uh, I think he's a sick play. All right. I'm I'm, I'm with you. I I like Kyron Williams quite a bit against the Cardinals. Great matchup there. Um, Alvin Kamara, any, any thoughts on Kamara? Uh, You know, I thought about it. Uh, no Michael Thomas. Um, I, don't, I don't remember what the game script in this is, but he's averaging like 7.5 targets and losses, something like that. Uh, I, I, I just, I just, I didn't write him up. I didn't think he was, he was close enough to play, but. Okay. Um, there, I there are several, maybe I'll open up to you and then I'll just ask about any running backs that you don't get to. But, but first I do want to, cause this is one that I want to talk about. Uh, Josh Gillamass thoughts on Jerome Ford seems like a nice spot against that Broncos run defense that uh, pe- teams have been able to run all over on any interest in Jerome Ford. Yeah. What's his ownership? We, we have him as contrarian. Yeah, we have Ford. Uh, what is that now? Yeah, we've he's come down to three percent. I think it was six percent earlier, but with all the updates to some of these other running backs, we've got him at just three percent. So that looks pretty nice to me. Yeah, he's a much better play than you know three percent ownership suggests. What's notable to me is he was finally allowed to touch the ball inside the red zone last week. Uh, inside the ten yard line, he played a five, played on five of six snaps, had all three of the team's carries across the previous seven weeks. He had just two carries. Uh, maybe a third as much as, uh, or a quarter as much as the other Browns running backs. Um, Kareem Hunt did see more work everywhere else, but I mean, still like that's, that's huge is getting that work. And then he's all also like a threat to, um, you know, break off long runs. We've seen it. This is a great offensive line. He's not bad and he gets the, what the best possible matchup. So, uh, 5,600, 4% ownership. I think he's an awesome play. All right, good. We are, we are on the same page, uh, on Jerome Ford being a really strong play. Um, uh, l- let me just open it up to you now for a bit. And then I'll, if, if there's anybody that you don't cover, then I'll ask you if there's anybody that I really like that you don't cover, uh, we can come back to it. Uh, would, would you rather I sort by ownership or by salary? What, what's easiest for you? Uh, keep it on ownership. Okay. Wait, am I? Yep. Okay. We're sorted by ownership here. Um, so right now we're on still, you know, some of the, I, I guess we, we, we get all the way down to 0% ownership down here. Um, so starting here, who, who do you like that we haven't talked about yet? Well, Travis Etienne, like just a, a strong play. He's, I know he's, he's a little chalky for you guys, but he is the leverage off of, I guess the chalkiest quarterback and a bunch of chalky pass catchers. Um, people are kind of nervous about recent usage. I looked into that. It, it, it's possible it's more than this, but it did look to me to be mostly just extreme outlierishly extreme game script, extreme po- negative gets the 49ers and an extreme positive game script last week. Um, that's what I think it is. I, 
but before those two games, you know, he was the RB four by fantasy points per game. Uh, you know, don't like him as much as some of the other names I, I, I brought up, but really strong play. Uh, Jalen Warren, obviously, uh, really strong play. Uh, Najee even is like a fine value, but, but definitely give the lean to the guy who's performing like the best running back in football this year. Um, and honestly, volume has been really tight in recent weeks. Uh, we know he can explode for, a a, a long run. Um, it was so frustrating. They, they come out last week and they say, I mean, actually, uh, Najee Harris on some of my better best ball teams. So not that frustrating, but surprising to me to, to hear them before the game last week. They come out and say, OK, Jalen Warren, you're our starting running back now. And then they didn't change a damn thing. It was still Najee who actually played more snaps than Jalen Warren last week. Uh, I thought that was that was kind of funny to see. Yeah, I mean, people think because Matt Canada got fired and now the running back coach is the OC, that might mean there's uh, going to be a changing of the guard. I I don't like I'm I'm obvi- obviously baking that in, but I I don't think that's going to be the case because Tomlin told us in the off season that this RB coach was going to be in charge of uh, delegating snaps for the running backs. Okay. Um, but I mean like there's still a chance, you know, you fire Matt Canada. That's like a big indication that we're trying to mix things up. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I think even if you like throw that out and assume it's like the same usage we've seen, he's still a really strong value with upside at 5,400. So yeah. I like him. Um, Deandre Swift is as leverage. He's fine. Bijan Robinson is like, honestly a good value, even if he doesn't get, any more work than he's been getting. And Arthur Smith has kind of said that, you know, we take it easy on the running backs. And then once they prove something to me, then they get more work and he's proved to me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there might be something there. Um, not a great matchup, but he's, he's just talented and he's, he's a fine value. I like, um, Javante stacked with Broncos defense. It's just like a total boomer bus play. It's basically like if Denver wins by, I don't know, six or more points like he Broncos D plus Javante is probably an awesome play. And then if it's anything beyond that, he's probably a terrible play. Um, Ramondre plus Patriots defense, like it's fine. Connor plus Cardinals defense. It's fine. Joe Mixon, fine. And that's that's kind of about it for me. Okay, I think that you actually you named most of the running backs that I wanted to talk about. Let me. I'm going to sort by team just to go through real quick, see if there was anybody that I had a significant interest in that I wanted to talk about. Um, well, you you shit all over my my Ty J Spears uh, long long shot play. I might take a, a shot or two there, but uh, I, I think yeah, your analysis is right. Like he, he's out there a lot. It's mostly empty. I guess I'm hoping that at some point maybe they actually up the volume of his actual opportunities um oh josh jacobs i know you don't have interest in josh jacobs against the dolphins to me this is sort of a similar spot here where it's like the chiefs defense has been a little bit of a run funnel uh he's 6700 would you would you bother running it back i'll ask you that would you bother running it back if you do him a home stack uh i don't not with jacobs i i honestly think it would be uh jacoby or mayor and i like don't feel good about that at all so um you'd want a cheap pass catching option essentially where you don't need 30 fantasy points to pay it off i mean this is another call that that johnny laughed at me for and rightfully so it's just like the same exact spot for jacoby myers as week one where legeria sneed has been awesome he's gonna shadow Devonte adams it's the perfect coverage shell matchup the difference is like aiden o'connell stinks like isn't even looking at jacoby yeah and this is kind of like a an old school defensive minded head coach who just wants to run the ball. I, I don't know. I think it's, I, I think the, probably the smartest thing to do is just not play a Raider. Okay. I, early, I feel like it was three weeks ago that I was shocked to see that Jacoby Myers was like, I want to say like top 10 in terms of uh target share in, in the entire NFL. And it's just completely fallen off in recent weeks. If Jimmy um, was starting, I, 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 he'd be a must play for me. Okay. And now yeah. you can't play him. It's crazy. With AOC, yeah, it's, it is crazy how quickly everything changes with the quarterback being out. Um, I feel like we, we've mentioned all of the uh, the running backs that I really want to ask you about. Um, let me see if there, let me just check chat real quick, see if there's anybody uh, that anybody wanted to bring up. DeAndre Swift, do you have any interest there? 
Yeah, yeah, I mentioned it. Um, oh, really yeah. strong leverage play, solid value. Uh, I will just say, like, part of my my thesis behind just Hertz and Allen are just insane plays this week is uh, Buffalo's was really soft against the run to start the year, and then they've really tightened up in recent weeks while getting significantly worse against the pass. I don't know how much that ma- matters. Um, you know, highest implied point total of the slate, strong volume related value, decent production related value. Uh, it's just like, I don't know, like what is there a ton of upside with, uh, you know, Jalen hurts the, the goat, you know, touchdown vulture. Um, it, it could happen. He's, he's a good play. He's, he's a good play. He's, uh, you know, he's right there with, with Etienne and Warren, I'd say. Okay. So he's he's playable, not just like not like uh not your favorite play of the slate. Yeah, not my favorites, but they're they're up there. They're good. Okay. All right, let's talk about some wide receivers. And of course, we've already talked about quarterbacks. So typically we can go through wide receivers somewhat quickly because we've already talked about most of the the favorites on there. But sorting by ownership, our highest owned player, man, we're up to 20% on Pittman now. So at one point he was a great leverage play off Jonathan Taylor. Now he himself is also one of the the highest owned plays on the slate. Uh, we've got AJ Brown, Christian Kirk, both above 15%, Cooper Cup right there at 15%. Uh, so of, of these four, let's start there. Who do you like? Who do you not like? Um, well, I love Michael Pittman. Uh, I don't where is where is I don't like him twice as much as Josh Downs. Okay. I think yeah, me, I think at, at cost at value, I, I probably like Downs uh slightly more than Pittman. Um okay. Let me pull up what I had on them. All right. And I will pull up looking at the uh, advanced receiving tool and the data suite. Um, Downs. So so I I guess this is just one. The most recent game, Downs (coughs) only played, uh, sorry, only ran routes on 43% of dropbacks. Is that at all concerning for you? Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. One one second. Okay. You pull that up because that... I just, uh, it's the first time I've looked at it just since he brought him up, and I'm surprised to see how few routes Josh Downs ran in the last game. Uh, kind of a small sample size because it was even Al Pierce, uh, 27 routes is the most. So not a ton there. Uh, yeah. So someone brought up DeAndre Swift playing in the slot more without Dallas Goddard. Um, that's just like not something I, I'm seeing at all. Uh, he hasn't exceeded three targets since week six. And, uh, he came close to a season low in route share last week. Uh, I think theoretically that that could happen, but uh, the numbers just aren't bearing that out. Um, sorry, that distracted me. Back to uh, Downs and Pittman. Yeah. Right. So so Downs was hurt. He had the bye week to rest up. Okay. His last two games, he played on 20% and 25% of the team snaps. That was entirely due to injury. That's going to stick in the back of mind, the mind of uh, DFS players. Yep. Uh, but you just throw that out. The totally injury biased games. Like people are going to see his DK fantasy points per game. Got to throw that those out. Wasn't healthy. Just totally bogus. But in game in healthy starts with Gardner Minshew, he was averaging 8.5 targets, 16.1 fantasy points per game. That's high end wide receiver two production. He also had 97 yards in another game that uh, Minshew came on in relief. Um, he had more re- receiving yards than, than Pittman when Minshew did come in. Uh, and he gets a best possible matchup. Let's go back to schedule adjusted. Buccaneers are, are really vulnerable to wide receivers, but they're dead last in the league to slot wide receivers, which is entirely uh, Down's whole thing. Okay. But it's also an awesome matchup for Pittman. So you see plus 2.6. That's like top six or whatever, but it's also Jamel Dean is out. They're starting perimeter cornerback. Carlton Davis is questionable. And I just mentioned the Josh Down splits, but I mean, Pittman splits with, Minshew are even more impressive. 10 targets, um, 17 fantasy points per game. That's low end wide receiver one production and volume. Uh, obviously the absence of downs kind of contributed to this a little bit, um, but still just like awesome volume, uh, awesome production. I think they're both like 
I don't know if you could play them both in cash. You probably can. And Jonathan Taylor too. But like just in terms of point per dollar, these are um, two of the top three uh, wide receiver plays of the week in, in my mind. Damn. Okay. So you're, you're all in on the, the Colts passing game. Uh, what could, what could go wrong there? I mean, I'm not like, I'm, I'm, I'm be, I'll probably have one on okay. nearly all of my lineups, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to, I mean, maybe you can play too, but uh, probably not going to do that outside of a few Minshew dub stacks. And like I said, I, I really like the, the Philly uh, Buffalo game. Um, uh, Prad, could you reach out to uh, support at stochastic.com? Just email support at stochastic.com. Uh, I'm not sure why that would be the case. I've never had an issue with that. So yeah, make sure you email support. Um, yeah. Uh, so you you like both. I think you said two of your two top three wide receiver plays on the slate are Pittman and Downs, but you would not play them together outside of a Minshew stack. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I wrote them up as like my top, like top three for cash, I, but at ownership, like, I think that doesn't bother me. I, I would just, I would just ha- bump downs more relative to Pittman because okay. like I said, I think I, they're at least like tied. Sure. Um, I know. So uh, moving down, you had interest in Jalen hurts, I'm assuming. And, and, and you, you brought up, you, you mentioned earlier that uh, with da- Dallas Goddard out, Devonte Smith sees a bump. AJ Brown sees a slight downgrade. Does that mean you like Devonte Smith better than AJ Brown? Do you still have interest in AJ Brown? What, what's your level of interest in these Eagles receivers? This, so this was giving me a headache. Um, yeah, I did mention at the top that, that they are, you can double stack Hertz now without Goddard. And I don't think the, the field really, uh, is looking at it that way. Um, but there is like an, if you want to just go with Oxum's razor of like what's happened this year, it's just AJ Brown is an amazing play. Devonta Smith is barely playable uh, because AJ Brown uh, hit like 20 DK um, in what seven straight games, averaging nearly 29 DraftKings fantasy points per game, where Smith uh, fell short of 15 and seven of eight, something like that. Uh, so it's just like, yeah, no brainer. Just play Brown. Don't even think about Devonta Smith, but. You know, we we were talking about Zay Jones being the key to unlocking Calvin Ridley. Maybe that's a thing. Maybe that's overstated. But you can make the same argument for Dallas Goddard being the key to unlocking A.J. Brown because over the past two seasons, Devonta Smith basically leapfrogs Brown as the wide receiver one. Their Their volume doesn't change too much, which, you know, you could say this is just bogus, noisy data. But, um, I, I kind of get that it's it's something real. Like you don't you lose that safety valve, that underneath option, that, or Devonta Smith now morphs into that role, and this would be the matchup for it for, to have that. Um, I also brought up, uh, or I tweeted about uh, AJ Brown splits when Jalen Hurts is under pressure versus not. He is the most efficient wide receiver in football. When Hertz has a clean pocket, he's one of the least efficient otherwise. And like Devonta Smith has the opposite splits. This is a top six pass rush. It's also an ideal schematic matchup for Devonta Smith against too high coverage. Um, you add it all up, and it's just a bunch of things pointing for Devonta Smith, who, by the way, last week without Dallas Goddard, uh, AJ Brown had one catch. Uh, Devonta Smith was one yard away from the hundred yard bonus. You could say that's just Legereus needs shadow coverage. You could say it's, it's something to the Goddard splits. I don't know that. Like I said, this is just giving me a headache, but I, I think it's really close and I, I don't know that it's that close by ownership. So maybe that's, that's where the lean should be. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think that that, that is a really, like we have a, you know, decent, like it's still a small sample size, but last year we had Goddard out several games and we saw the big bump to Devonte Smith. So we at least have, it's not just like a one game sample size. We had the sample size last year. We talked about it before the last game that the Eagles played. And then it happened. Smith once again, put up, I mean, he, he got tackled at the one yard line on a long bomb. If he just gets into the end zone there, that's another like 10 or nine fantasy points. Cause he gets the hundred yard bonus and the touchdown with that one more yard uh, would have absolutely smashed. Of course, that was a, a showdown slate. So you couldn't play him anyway, but um, 
yeah, I think like at this point we have a big enough sample size that like you can at least play into it when Devonte Smith is not getting crazy owner. If he was getting 30% ownership, I might say, let's just fade the narrative and go to the guy who's been great this year. But uh, yeah, I think that it makes a lot of sense to, uh, to bump up Devonte Smith and hope that, you know, the people continue to fade him and, and the narrative is real that he's better with Dallas Goddard out. And, um, and I, I agree with you. I think you can play both Devonte Smith and AJ Brown in a lineup. Uh, you know, it's uh, tough to fit, but yeah, yeah, right. It's going to be easy very on expensive. FanDuel, but okay. Um, yeah, so I, I I like it. I think that's a, a great thought to, to to play Devonte Smith in place of and along with AJ Brown in lineups makes a lot of sense to me. Um, yeah, and again, it's it's not just that the the Goddard thing or what happened in the most recent game. It's it's also uh, a schematic advantage for yep. Devonta Smith. It's also um, Buffalo, even without Tre'Davious White, as always really strong against wide receiver ones. They're also always every single season, the best defense in the league uh, at defending the deep ball. So like if there were a week for it to be Devonta Smith, regardless of, you know, Goddard splits, it would be this week. Interesting. Uh, what about the other side of the game? I think I just sold myself on Devonta Smith. This was, yeah. I think you just sold everybody on Devonta Smith. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, All we'll right. Uh, can, we, can we talk about my, I think what the top wide receiver play of the the week is. No, we don't. We don't want to talk. No. About all right. Well, hey, we can. We can. No. Nobody has interest in here. That. Scott. Uh, yeah. Tell tell me about it. Uh, I think it's Dang, Tank Dell. Like I just don't know why Tank Dell isn't twenty five percent owned. I I didn't know. You know, he should have been. I don't know. Thirty percent owned last week. Was he? I think he was. It was super high on last week. Yeah. yeah so so why owned. why isn't he why isn't he there this week? after doing exactly what everyone wanted him to do, you know, in an amazing matchup. All right. Well, let me, let me give you the, the counterpoint. Why aren't we playing Nico Collins who had more targets in that game? Like, so are you, are you at this point just convinced that tank Dell is better than Nico Collins? Is that what it comes down to? This is how I wrote it up. I, I wrote it up earlier in the week that, okay, tank Dell is going to be the chalkiest wide receiver play of the week. And rightfully so over the last three weeks, he, has 200 more air yards than any other receiver. He's been really productive. This was CJ Stroud's boy. He told the Texans to draft him. He looks yeah. awesome. He's getting open at will. It's a top six matchup. But Nico Collins is going to be way too low owned because like, he's a really good play. I think the field is a little overconfident that Dell is the wide receiver one when guess what? Nico saw better volume last week. He's the more efficient receiver by yards per route run. They both have the same number of spike weeks. The issue is I'm looking at ownership and it's like, okay, Tank Dell didn't come in at 30% like I thought he was going to be. He's coming in at, I don't know, half that. So he's just an awesome play, but like Nico is also an awesome play. I like both a lot. Okay. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because yeah, Nico Collins, 11 targets in the most recent game, Tank Dell 10 as well. Both look fantastic. Do you have any worries about the matchup here? I mean, it is. Not no, a, no, it's, a, it's okay. Tell me, go ahead. All right. I mean, it, so just, just uh, sorting by last five, where do we have Jack? I feel like Jacksonville is near the bottom here. Am I wrong about that? Okay. They're, I guess they're middle of the pack. Jacksonville's defense against wide receivers uh, over the past five games. Slightly about, negative matchup here. Yeah. What, what about left wide receiver? Click on left wide receiver. That's interesting. All right. Left wide receiver. Jacksonville is uh, not as good. They, they don't defend. So who, I know, who is so the, who is the le- I think they mix these guys around, but let me see. Can I find that in the data suite right here? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, wide receiver versus cornerback chart. That's uh, typically Nico Collins, 42% of the time, Tank Dell, 30% of the time. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I would just look over the the full season sample. And okay. full season sample, Jaguars are bottom six. But that's a good point that it seems the have tight, tightened up most recently, I guess, with Tyson Campbell back being the big thing. Um, were, are, were they down a cornerback? I feel like I remember them being down a cornerback. Oh, I don't remember. See. I think that does sound right, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tyson On Campbell. Tyson Campbell's out, um, and I think uh, Darius, whatever his name is. Okay, Th- they're out for this week. No, uh, Dar- Darius Williams was out for a while, okay. I think, but he- he's back now. Tyson Campbell, uh, he's he's out. He's their best cornerback. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, 
so yeah interest in both dell and collins that is uh what i like to hear i mean that's our, our tools uh like both to, to some extent i guess we, we have uh dell pretty significantly over owned at 14 percent. so you're saying it should be 30 percent. you're you're disagreeing a little bit with that take um but then nico collins is somebody that i to me i i thought there was going to be a bigger gap in the ownership so i was a little bit disappointed to see nico collins picking up some ownership but still it's just nine percent to me it seems like nice leverage off of i wouldn't be surprised to see dell come in pretty significantly above our ownership number just based on what he did last week like i think there is something to like everybody played him last week and it worked out for them so everybody's gonna want to go right back there to him um so i i wouldn't be surprised to see the ownership coming in higher here although you know that the ownership projection is always uh gonna beat me 95 percent of the time so uh who knows we'll we'll see how that goes um who else? Who else? Do we want to talk about these Tampa Bay guys? Godwin Evans. Do you have a, a take there? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't even write up Godwin. Uh, I would just play Evans. I, I think he. I don't know. I seriously doubt Godwin's upside, especially relative to that of Evans. Um, is an awesome matchup for both of them, though. Yeah, yeah. We we actually we have positive leverage on both Godwin and Evans. Um, so yeah, ten percent going to ownership going to Evans with a fourteen percent chance of being optimal. We actually have Godwin with an eighteen percent chance of being optimal at twelve percent ownership. Um, you you just think that that, that you think he's washed or what, what do you dislike about Godwin? Just the opportunities? Uh, just the lack of upside relative to Mike Evans. Um, I guess Godwin did have a few double digit target games this year, but uh, he has one touchdown on the year. He's eclipsed. 80 yards just once meanwhile like evans if you throw out that one game he left early with an injury he's been uh you know right up there with some of the top wide receivers in fantasy he'd be on the slate sixth in xfp per game sixth in fantasy points per game um top seven matchup is it just baker mitchell can't support two star receivers like tom brady can yeah, well, to me, it's just clear that there's a preference, and it's yeah, and it's Evans. And if you played Godwin every week, I think he's he's hurt you every week minus maybe one, and that might have been a game Evans got hurt. Yeah. Um, we we talked about lock, liking Josh Allen is Stefan Diggs. You just go there when you play Josh Allen or anybody else you like. Yeah, I, I think Diggs can go under own, especially relative to AJ Brown. Um, because he's had back-to-back brutal matchup matchups, uh, Jets and Patrick Sertain. Uh, but before that, he was just like an absolute stud, and this is the ultimate get-right spot for him. Um, Eagles are giving up the second most schedule adjusted to wide receivers, the fourth most fantasy points per game to wide receiver ones. It's a great schematic matchup. And like I said, but before those back-to-back brutal matchups, uh, he was averaging 22 fantasy points per game. Um, I like him. We should talk about the Jaguars wide receivers. Yeah. I'm not super convicted on this, but um, yeah, I think it's like play Kirk and cash up against this um, slot funnel defense, um, but then play Ridley for tournaments because like, I don't, I don't really think Kirk has much of a ceiling. Maybe this is a week where that doesn't really matter, but he's only cleared 20, DraftKings fantasy points once that was that was week two um ridley has the zay jones skeleton key narrative working in his favor yeah. whether or not that's a thing it's just we know ridley clearly has the the better ceiling uh so that's how i'd play it okay so you i mean it sounds like you have some interest in both of them but kirk would be the cash game play um Sounded like you you are not really interested in these uh, playing playing the full on Ram stack. What about the Rams as uh, individual? Like, do you like Cooper Cup or Puka Nakua as like one off plays? Yeah, Cooper Cup kind of scares the crap out of me. Uh, the low ankle sprain, and then like yeah. the best argument for Puka, I feel like is assuming Coop, Cooper Cup is seriously hurt. He's playing the decoy role or he's just not effective. And so Puka goes back to like who he was through the first four weeks of the season where he was like, you know, uh, I don't know, the number one or number two scoring wide receiver in fantasy. Uh, but again, like I do worry about Stafford's health. He was the second worst or second least most accurate quarterback in football last week. 
Um, it is an awesome matchup, like an amazing matchup. And like, he could easily get there on volume alone. He was one of the players I, I really struggled with. Stafford that is no Puka. Oh, Puka. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I, I guess I, I'll open it up to you before I ask any more questions. Who, who else, who, who do you like as contrarian plays or any other players you want to talk oh, about? Boy. Right? Um, Colts wide receivers like a lot. Texans wide receivers like a lot. Does that uh, does that go to Alec Pierce also, or is he kind of out of the equation with Josh Downs presumably playing a bigger role? <laughs> Absolutely no interest in Alec Pierce. Were you I mean, on Alec you, Pierce? No, I, I'm not on Alec Pierce, but I looked at his, uh, I was looking at the most recent game. Oh, they didn't play in week 11, so this will have to be week 10, but he played like 96, ran like 96% of routes. Yeah, I know he's he's game. Chris Hogan reincarnated. Okay, yeah, he had one one target in that game. Rich Rebar calls calls guys like him uh, cardio kings, just out there, you know, on the treadmill, just running, running. Um, all right, so another guy for you, uh, Deontay Johnson. It's just like forty nine hundred insane volume. Um, yeah. He had a twenty nine percent target share last week. I know he scored like three fantasy points. Um, but, uh, top seven wide receiver and target share over the last month of the season, not at all price like it, uh, top XFP related value. The slate have to have to mention him, have to bring it up. Uh, you know, maybe the Matt Canada departure, uh, you know, is the, the cure to what's been ailing this offense. I, I'm kind of skeptical of that. Honestly, in, in my, uh, article, the everything report, I kind of let it off with just like, this is like a weird year. This is a gross year. There's no parity this year. The top, something like the top five offenses in football have more, have supported more 30 plus DraftKings fantasy point games than all other teams combined. It's just like, this yeah. is a year with like, you know, injuries, the quarterback injuries where like, you could just write off some teams. And so I said that in like this, uh, uh, opening statement of the article where like you could just cross off the Steelers or guys like Deontay Johnson, but I don't know. I, I kind of want to chase that volume with him. Maybe that's a mistake. Um, Rashid Jaheed. I mean, and Chris Olave, you can make a case for as well, but no, Michael Thomas obviously leads and, and AT Perry at this. I was going to ask you about JT Perry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shout out Danny Kelly. Who's like one of the best film watchers in the game and a close friend of mine. Like he, uh, assures me at perry is damn good at ball and he he just really? needs a chance uh and so like when when danny gives a shout out like that my ears definitely uh perk up um, i picked up at perry in my uh, unlimited keeper league because i am i'm i have very few bent wide receivers and i thought maybe he has a shot because somebody on, on twitter had written about how good he was so maybe it was maybe it was dan i don't know if i had to pick a favorite uh definitely be shaheed though he's just uh running about 60% of his routes from the slot. Uh, and the Falcons are a top slot funnel, or at least that's just where they're most vulnerable. Uh, they're really tough on the perimeter. So uh, I would chase Shahid over the the other options. And you have um, been the Rashid Shahid whisperer this year. So uh, you got to listen. When Scott well, says to play Rashid Shahid. It's not the perfect zone matchup, which is what okay. we've been targeting, but he, he does sure. have the, the cornerback matchup. Um. Mike Evans, we mentioned, oh, Khalil Shakir is like a legitimately good play. Uh, over the last four weeks, he's running around on 69% of the dropbacks. Nice. Uh, only four targets per game, but also 72 yards per game. Uh, third most efficient wide receiver from the slot this year behind only Jamar Chase and Tyreek Hill. Uh, and, uh, you know, when Allen's had a good slot wide wide receiver, they've been successful for fantasy. Um Justin Watson too, like obviously, you know, people are going to chase this because, you know, he had, he had done nothing all year and, but, uh, had 11 targets last week and maybe he's a trap. Maybe the chiefs wide receivers are a trap all year. And it like, I've fallen for that trap, uh, so badly with like my love for Justin Ross and Kadarius Tony in the off season. But, uh, yeah. I mean, 11 targets, six more than anyone else, 151 air yards, um, only 54% of the team's dropbacks, but there are those wide receiver injuries. Uh, yeah, let's go. we don't have Kadarius Tony out of our tools yet. Um, 
but yeah, that that'll probably be a, a slight like Kadarius Tony hasn't played that much anyway, right? Yeah, really, it's just minimum priced Mahomes wide receiver who just saw eleven targets, and it's it's hard yeah. to argue with that. If you want to get contrarian and play some Rasheed Rice, like that's probably smart. But um, I get yeah, I it. Kadarius Tony ran 13, 20, 26 percent route participation last week for Kadarius Tony, twenty four percent for Michael Hardman. So there is a, they actually do open up a little bit more for. Rasheed Rice, Justin Watson, Sky Moore, potentially at, at least. I, I I think the previous week they had played even less than that, but uh, yeah, they they actually do open up a little bit more for these receivers. Um, so I think those are good. And and Justin Watson min price too. So yeah, that's uh, kind of interesting at least. Um, all right, I like I like Shahid more, but Demario Douglas is another one. Uh, Giants are, I mean, their defense is kind of not great, but they're easily bottom three against slot wide receivers. So that would be a good spot for him. If Mac Jones is the starter, if not, uh, I would just look elsewhere. Uh, uh, I need to ask you since you brought up pop Douglas, we got to talk about Judas Smith Schuster because he is popping in these stochastic tools. And I saw this honestly, and I thought it must be a mistake this morning. And then uh, we, we keep updating and Judas Smith Schuster continues to look great. He's min priced. We've got him at sub 8% ownership. 21 percent chance of being optimal for juju smith schuster it, it definitely um makes me uh ill to to think about playing juju but 82 percent route participation in the last game you can see here only had one target do you, do you have any interest in the min price juju i don't think so i just don't think there's any upside um okay. i think he's just like fully washed uh he season high of 8.1 oh no no, no. One uh, season high of 11.1 DraftKings fantasy points is only game over eight. Um, I just don't think there's any upside there. I, I like Justin Watson more for sure. Okay. So you prefer Justin Watson as your uh, min priced receiver. I got, right. I got a few um, more. Yeah. Um, Greg Dorch versus Ron Dale. Yes. All right. So, so I've been saying, I just think Greg Dorch is so much better than Ron Dale. Sorry, I just, and like every time he's been given the opportunity, he's proven he's better than Rondale. Over the last two seasons, route share of 66% or better. Greg Dorch averages 15.2 fantasy points per game. Rondale averages 9.6 fantasy points per game. Uh, The only issue is this is uh, a slot funnel-ish matchup, really tough on the perimeter. Um, But I mean, Michael Wilson's out. Mark Marquise Brown's banged up. Um, I honestly think it's close and I'm like the Greg Dorch guy, um, uh, just given the matchup, but, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely got to play my guy Dorch, you know, any, any time I'm given the opportunity, um, Drake London up against a Marshawn Lattimore list. Saints defense is fine. Um, Trent Irwin backup connection is fine. Um, AT Perry is fine, and then I got one galaxy brain play I want to pick your brain on, but all right, let's hear it. it. Let's, um, maybe Jamar Chase should never be sub five percent ever. What do you think? I don't think I'm going, so yeah, see, seeing 4% Jamar Chase, it's at least an interesting, it's a good call out just because of the ownership being so low. I wrote him off earlier as I was going through, I was like, I'm just not playing an expensive wide receiver who's relying on Jake Browning. But I mean, you are right. Like, it, it, would we be that shocked to see them throw two touchdowns? They're both to Jamar Chase and he gets a hundred yard bonus. I guess I wouldn't be that shocked to see it. I, it is. So I, I've said in the past, like the, the best place to find contrarian plays are, uh, good players in bad spots and bad players in good spots. Or in, And by bad players, I mean players who don't typically get a ton of opportunity in spots where they're getting more opportunity. Jamar Chase clearly uh, qualifies as a good player in a bad spot. So he definitely qualifies of the places that typically you can find the best contrarian plays. Uh, so from that perspective, I can see it. I don't think I'm going to go there this week just because I think that there are enough other plays that I like enough that I don't need to. Um, yeah, we, um, Muhammad, Muhammad agrees with you. Jamar chase is going to kill that secondary. Ah, man, I don't know. I just, I don't know that I fully trust Jake Brown. I don't know if that last second touchdown last week is going to be enough for me to go there. Uh, but you think, you think you could, you know, make a case for it. 
Yeah. So uh, when Jamar Chase scored 60 DraftKings fantasy points that one week, um, I, it led me in the off season to write an article that said like guys like Jamar Chase should never be sub 5%. It's just like, you can't ever let that happen. And I get that like Jake Browning changes the equation, but it's really like how much does it change the equation? Because I mean, like, is he going to be worse than how bad Bryce young has been? Because like Adam Thielen has been fine this year. Sure. We've seen a 40 burger from Amon Ross St. Brown with Tim Boyle as his quarterback, a 40 burger from Devonte Adams with uh, Stidham as his quarterback, DJ Moore 35 with Darnold and Kyle Allen. And Jamar Chase is just one of those transcendent talents. And like the cheat code also, by the way, was always like, especially when T Higgins was out or banged up. And so it's like, would anyone be surprised if he just, you know, uh, Browning comes in and he's like, listen, I know my, oblig- I know uh, the task being asked of me here and is just get the ball to Jamar chase as often as possible. And chase gets 15 targets and 111 yards and a touchdown, maybe two. Uh, but I know this one's galaxy brain. I, I, Graham Barfield, Johnny Proctor didn't like it on my show. So I, I just wanted to bounce it off to you. I honestly, I think that it is a reasonable call. Like it would not be that shocking if we come out a Sunday and see, yeah, Jamar chase had 12 receptions on 15 targets or, or you know, m- maybe even more like they, it would not be that shocking with T Higgins out to see Browning just absolutely funnel it to Jamar chase every time. So I don't entirely hate it. Like I, I wrote it off pretty quickly when, when I was asked about Jamar chase earlier, but I can see the case for it for sure. Just even with a bad quarterback, you get enough volume, just, you know, raw hundred yards and on 10 receptions. That's a lot of fantasy points right there. You don't even necessarily need the touchdown there. Um, so yeah, I, I feel I like he also it. makes sense in like the age of the opto and sim where it's like, it's he's not definitely well at all. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and that's uh, I, I was gonna say the same thing because uh, somebody in, in chat just said Chase isn't. Yeah, G, uh, G, GC says Chase isn't worth the eighty three hundred. Correct, but like that's that absolutely. doesn't matter yeah. if he scores thirty five, right? And like, right on this slate, like you know, he's a transcendent talent, and uh, you know, like we've we've seen shittier wide receivers score thirty five with like far worse quarterbacks. So I don't know, or similar yeah, no, quarterbacks I, at least. I think you've talked me into maybe I'll play a share or two of. of yeah, all right. That was, I, think, yeah, I think you made a good point. To be honest, I, I think that okay. it is a very valid point that he's just he's talented enough. He is he's alpha enough that like you know that he should be theoretically a new quarterback coming in should just be like I'm going to get it to my best player. Uh, if Browning is capable of doing that, I guess we'll we'll find out. Uh, but yeah, that is a good point that they should be at least feeding him the ball. That's a, a valid reason to to consider him in some lineups. Um, all right. Anybody else that you want to talk about here? No, I don't think so. Sub 1% Gabe Davis, any interest there? I just really think like, not in terms of usage, like the route share is still there, but I think like maybe in Josh Allen's eyes is Don Kincaid has just really supplanted him as the number two. And yep. maybe even Shakir is the number three in terms of targets. True. That could just be, you know, uh, me being misled by a, a recent sample, but uh, I don't know. I just don't think he's good and okay. he's, he's not cheap at all. I would much rather play Kincaid and Shakir and Diggs for sure. Um, you didn't have a ton of interest in DTR. Do you have any interest in any of these receivers as one-offs against Denver? Uh, Amari Cooper is going to draw shadow coverage from Patrick Sertain. So he's dead. Okay. Maybe, maybe Elijah, but uh, uh, I really like Ford and uh, another play we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay. Sounds good. I think uh, we are, you talked about having some interest in Jacoby Myers. If, if you're going to play anybody as a bring back in your Mahomes sacks, it would be Jacoby Myers. We have at 0.1% ownership. I know. I just I thought you know. about it. I I don't know that I can, I'm sure I will, okay. but it's probably, you'd, you'd rather just do a no bring back essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, oh, and I, I mentioned, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins, I brought up Will Levis as somebody that I have interest in. I'm going to have interest in DeAndre Hopkins. He's obviously in my Will Levis stacks. I, he might be, it might, might just solo stack him with DeAndre Hopkins here. It's a great spot against Carolina, uh, 7% ownership going there, 10.6% chance of being optimal here for us. So looks good 
for us in our tools. I have interest in, in going to some DeAndre Hopkins acts. I know you prefer the run game, but any interest in DeAndre Hopkins? Uh, I think he's a good play. Um, it, it just like hasn't been hitting because uh, they're just so slow paced and they're so run heavy. Uh, but like, I didn't think Le- Levis looked that bad last week. And I think DeAndre Hopkins looks awesome whenever he gets the ball. Um, it, it's a bad matchup. Like that's part of why I love Henry is it, it does look like a massive run funnel, but uh, for a player this talented at that price tag and that projected ownership, I, I think, no, I, I can't hate on that at all. Cool. All right. Should we move on and look at tight ends? Yeah. I don't know if you want to do an ad read or something. I really have to go to the bathroom. So I'll be right all right. Back. You go pee. And uh, I don't know that I have an ad read, but you, you go ahead and pee and I'll, I'll think of something to talk about while Scott is down here. Maybe I'll pull up the stochastic Sims here. Uh, hang on. Yeah, here's, here's the page that we're on. I'm just going to go. So if you want to find the Stochastic Sims, again, the link is in the description of this video. You just go to NFL. Uh, so so after, you, after you sign up for the Sims, you'll have access to this. But you start with the contest generator. This is where you can generate your contest here. So uh, figure out the field size that you're playing in. If you're playing in the largest, uh, and we're looking at DraftKings, this is the main slate. I'm going to go to the largest pool size you can do right now, which is 10,000. Uh, good enough representation of the fields that you're playing in. And then you can choose what kind of stack exposures do you want in your field in the Sims. So this is the default is 45% of our lineup is going to be quarterback plus one, 25% quarterback plus two. I'm going to let's see if, if I put in a couple more quarterback plus three. I'm gonna I'm gonna up the uh, bring bring back to forty percent. Click apply. Now I'm gonna click generate lineups. And what it's doing right now, it's generated ten thousand lineups for us within those stack types that I just put. Um, so we're, we're gonna get our ten thousand. Then what I'm gonna do is simulate those lineups against each other. So it's just the ten thousand lineups that is generating right now, which are all gonna be you know. M- it's supposed to be a representation of the field essentially so it's not going to be all great lineups but there's going to be a lot of great lineups in here maybe some not so great lineups but that look like lineups you'd expect the field to play so i'm just right now generating those ten thousand lineups uh and in a minute here once after those lineups have generated usually takes about a minute oh scott is back so we're not going to go through the entire sims package i I was just letting them while you're while you're gone scott uh reminding people this is 50 percent off you can find the link in the description of this video if you want to check out the uh i mean maybe we should play around with it one day where you know when we're building our lineups it's like all right well if we like this i don't know Minshew dub stack is what would the sim do to optimize it yeah, I, I've gotten more into using the Sims because I like to play so many like off the wall players. It was it was tough for me some because I'm like I don't want to generate lineups that like there might be players that I like that won't even be represented in ten thousand lineups because the field isn't going to get there. But it's getting more and more customizable. So yeah, it is it is something that we should check out at some point. But uh, I don't think that's what people want to do right now. Something that people again you can check it out for yourself. Link in the description. Fifty percent off currently if you're interested um are we we're moving on to tight ends right you don't have any other wide receivers you want to talk about um no yeah okay. moving on to tight ends yeah and we'll do we'll do tight ends and then we will uh build some lineups and then i've got my nba show coming up next <laughs> all right so highest owned tight end and we we have uh pretty clear four separating from the pack in terms of optimal odds and there are also the four highest owned here those being trey mcbride evan ingram dalton kincaid Travis Kelsey, are you inclined to just like go to the, the best four tight ends on the slate or are, are you, I guess let's start with those four and then we can talk about anybody else you might rather go to instead. How do you feel about McBride, Ingram, Kincaid and Kelsey? Yeah. If I, if I were like a Sim to me, like the, uh, the optimal tight ends would be like 50% Trey McBride, 25% Dalton Kincaid, 15% David and Joku. Wow. Okay. And then the rest, like Angram, Kelsey, Schultz. The Scott Brain Sims disagree with, with some of these plays here. <laughs> um, all right. So so McBride, it sounds like he's your favorite tight end play of the slate. I'm just I'm just telling you what it should be. Uh I I think we have him project to be a little bit chalkier. Yeah, we have him at 33%, which sounds surprise me. close yeah. to right. I mean, he's just been so dominant in terms of volume usage. We talk about it every single week. 
but he gets a nuts matchup this week. Uh, we've talked about how Hollywood Brown really struggles against uh, zone coverage, or at least he's much better in man. And McBride is typically and Michael Wilson step up in zone. He, he's been crushing zone. He gets a zone heavy matchup, but it's also, you should pull up schedule adjusted for this, but it's the nuts matchup. Rams are the number one tight end funnel defense. And so you look, they're a top three matchup. So yep. they rank third and allowed to tight ends, but uh, look at how sh- how tough they are against outside wide receivers. Uh, look at how tough they are against yeah. you know pass catching running backs, and so funnels all the volume to the tight end. This is a tight end funnel passing attack, you could argue, like a, a yeah. passing offense. I mean, for for Arizona, and so uh, perfect perfect spot. Um, Think he's we also awesome got Michael player. Wilson out, so he's like the only big receiver for the right. Party. Right, <laughs> little <laughs> little Rondale right. Moore, little Greg Dorch. Yep, little Marquise Brown, who I, I believe and, Marquise Brown also questionable. Which I, I, I heard yeah. that somewhere. I didn't actually see that, but I think I heard somebody say that he's also questionable. So yeah, like they have the the one big pass catcher, and he's they're already funneling it to him. That's a uh, that's a good point. So McBride looks great. Uh, you had some interest in I, I don't know. I know you said Najoku in there. Um, yeah, Hollywood is seriously questionable. He missed practice both on Thursday oh, and Friday. Okay. Yeah, so that helps as well. So again, fifty percent. Sorry, that's just what my my the the sim in my brain says. Uh, and then after that is Kincaid. Yeah, again, I just think uh, he's probably supplanted Gabe Davis as the clear number two, and I think rightfully so. Um, hasn't shown a ton of upside, but we know that's there. At least should be there in this game environment uh remarkably consistent he's he's hit 16 fantasy points in four or five games um really good volume uh top 10 matchup uh evan ingram i have a little bit lower it's like he's still like a really great volume related value it's just minimal touchdown upside uh he has negative nine receiving yards inside the red zone this year he just has one end zone target uh still like a fine play i just don't think he comes close to mcbride or kincaid or njoku who is the one you were just talking about engram engram okay yeah yeah he's not gotten any kind of touchdown luck Um, i i'd I'd, I'd rather play njoku personally um you just look at what njoku's done uh with dtr and dtr's two starts led the team in targets in week four with seven led the team in targets last week with 15 Neil, the guy saw 15 targets last week. It was the most Damn. of any tight end in any week this season. Uh, 29% target share with DTR. That's top five at any position. And we'll guess what? That. You can go back to schedule adjusted. Denver ranks right above the Rams uh, in terms of favorable matchup. So sec- second yep. best possible matchup for Njoku. Uh, not drawing ownership. Um, I oh, like it a have- lot. Yeah, Engram from this perspective also looks great just in terms of the matchup interest. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, that's why like I can't hate on him despite him not being involved near the end zone at all. Um, so it's a great a spot good, for all three of those guys. I think in my earlier show, somebody was asking about uh, Pat Fryermuth. Looks like he has a great matchup here. I didn't look at what he ended up playing in the most recent game. Did they ease him back in? Let's see. Yeah, he had a 36% route share, 53% snap share. I I wrote him up too. I like him. I mean, it's just the guy you were drafting top 10 among tight ends in season long and you know, probably just easing him back last week. Maybe they step it up. Great matchup. Uh, I've heard a few people here mentioning K. Dotton. How much interest do you have, if any, in K. Dotton? Yeah, I'd take that bet. I think think Otten just stinks. Maybe he scores scores a touchdown though. Not a believer in Otten. Uh, welcome, Drew and Sue. Good to have you. Um, Chris, this is sort of an interesting thought. Do you think uh, Car being out helps the odds of uh, Taysom, Taysom at all in terms of just like, is he going to get in and play a little quarterback at all? Do you, do you have any any thoughts there? <laughs> it could be. Could be for sure. Uh, Taysom is like 5, my favorite player in the NFL. He's so fun, but I, I just can't ever play him in DFS. It's just... You know, uh, it could it could happen. Give him give him some goal line carries, a few targets, and a few pass attempts, and he could be the guy. He's just so tough for like a fantasy analyst to try and you know uh, articulate uh, the expectation there. Cheshire 
Cheshire Cat calling us rude for ever shitting on Kadon. Apparently, apologies, apologies for shitting on your play. All right, any other any other tight ends you want to talk about before we build our lineups? Um, Tommy Tremble. Uh, he'll play ninety five percent of the snaps, but he stinks. He'll probably only see two targets. Um, Michael Mayer is only like I like Fryermuth, but only slightly more. Uh, Dalton Schultz, like he's not a value, but but we know the upsides there. He's leverage off sure. of the wide receivers. Um, Kelsey, I feel like people aren't going to play him outside of Mahomes lineups. So if you want to get unique, you can you can consider that. Um, I think that's it. Really, it's just my sim brain telling me 50 percent McBride, twenty percent Kincaid. All right, so we're just we're jamming Kincaid. Fifteen percent. We're jamming, jamming McBride this week. Um, all right, that's that's a good good synopsis of the tight ends. I think. Uh, do you want to talk about defenses at all, or should we build our lineups? No, let's talk defense. I I, I need right. to do more. I have to tweak our projections and, and do some more research into it. But uh, all right, so we have the Patriots, the Chiefs, and the Broncos as chalk all getting over 10 percent ownership um any interest that seems right what what do you guys yeah. have as a uh, good leverage as our highest leverage play we have bucks defense yeah i mean that, that makes sense with the colts being a little bit chalky i think they, they're the chalkiest wide receiver and running back uh you can find some nice leverage on the bucks both in terms of just like ownership versus optimal but then actual leverage against some of the opposing players as well uh, Browns defense up there. That makes sense to me. Good defense against the Broncos. Um, Bills, interesting against the, the Eagles, I wouldn't think, but they're getting very little ownership. Raiders, that one surprised me. Raiders, a uh, little bit of positive <laughs> leverage against the Chiefs. At 2,800 um, too, without Max Crosby. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, it's, that's asking a lot. Um, so yeah, these are our top leverage plays. So who, who are your favorite defensive plays? Oh, I don't know. I thought it was those top three that you had you just like the chalk basically i mean yeah patriots chiefs broncos stand out as the the three top i mean you could do giants uh i guess that's another you know playing with saquon um i did have more thoughts i just don't know about the eagles like i feel like uh that makes more sense to me if you yeah the eagles are a great leverage sack against josh allen that makes more sense to me with all the the interceptions he throws wow the Um, cheapest defense this week is only 2600 interesting okay texans against uh against the jaguars interesting we got a little bit of positive leverage there um all right anything else on defenses or you want to build some lineups um yeah let's do it all right let's build some lineups we're gonna do the millie maker as always wait that's not what i want to do bobby all right entering the millie who did I tell you? Who did I tell you? I'm going to build Stafford. I'm going to force you to play one Stafford lineup with me. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Let's get that one out of the way, just to make sure that you have exposure to to Stafford lineup in one, and then we'll then we'll build some lineups that you want to do uh, with players that you like instead. But for this first one, let's do let's do a Stafford lineup. Uh, who, who's your favorite? Oh, it's clearly we got to play McBride in this one, right? Yeah, I will say. Um, your boy Alex Baker would add Kyler to this. That seems to be his thing. Kyron, Kyron. Kyron. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's a good call. Full-on game stack. I like it. We like Kyron anyway. I, you yeah. you got to ask him why he does that. I, every time I see one of his winning lineups, I'm like, he did it again. What, what, what's he thinking here? I think he's doing it because it keeps working for him. I guess <laughs> so, keeps, right? He's yeah. winning contests. That's right. Um, yeah. All right. Let's. Who, who, who's our cheap defense we can throw in here? You like to... Uh, wait, no. Not the Raiders. I thought Eagles was a good call. Let me let me check uh, what we have as top values. <clears throat> Patriots, Chiefs, uh, Titans, Broncos, Texans. All I right. like the Eagles call though. All right, you want to do it? I mean, because we're going to do other lineups that are just uh, Josh sure. Allen stack, so I think that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so now we have 
46 33 remaining for a running back a wide receiver and a flex i feel like a wide receiver is the easiest spot to save some money so we could play i mean rashid he's a little bit below that price um oh what what is dorch should we go to the greg hell yeah dorch god dorch dorch god the my, my phone for for three years now every time i type in dorch it auto corrects to dorch god <laughs> love it um yeah he's just a target monster good good to, good play to get in there now we have 5300 remaining are there any super cheap running backs we like i know you're you're not a fan of the the ty j spears chase edmonds. oh chase edmonds would make a lot of sense if we end up we would have to give ourselves the the right to swap off that yeah and then that will give us 6,300 remaining. Mix in. You don't like Godwin. Pacheco, we could get in there. Um, Hopkins. Great volume. Does that make I, sense? I would, I would Pacheco. get Pacheco probably. I think that's a really solid lineup, to be honest. I like it. Oh, yeah. man. I didn't even realize Dorch is. So we did, we did a full on. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Two Arizona bringbacks. We have three. Uh, three skill players from the Rams. I don't hate it. Honestly, that's a game that could go completely off. So I think that's, uh, I, I, I really think no one's going to have, I think, I think no one's going to have Stafford. I think no one's going to have cup off of a low ankle. Um, I don't think anyone's going to have Dorch. Yeah. I like this is going to be unique. I like it. Uh, I don't know who plays when. So if I have, I'm assuming Pacheco, this is an afternoon game anyway. So I think we're fine. All right. I can enter that one. And then let's enter another one. And uh, how do you want to start this one? Um, let's do Allen. Good, good. Devonta. Devonta Adams. Devonta or Devonta Smith. Smith. Devonte. Yes, Devonte <laughs> Smith. Um, and then who do you want to pair with Allen? Um, Shakir, you're a madman. We're skipping right past Diggs. All right. Okay. And so Diggs. And, and Diggs. Diggs. Okay. All right. So we are where we are. I mean, we. I thought about it, but yeah. And then what we'll, we can. Um, we can always take one out depending on on what we're building. And then running backs, let's do um, Kyron. Okay. Um, We're going to have to get cheap somewhere. Oh, damn. So yeah. You go super cheap at defense. I mean, Texans 2,600. Sure. You hate Trevor Lawrence. So, you know. I, I do. Mortal enemy. Um. <laughs> Are we gonna? Do we want to try just throwing Chase Edmonds in here again? Or, yeah, but or? then, but then after this, we can't do uh, Chase Edmonds again. Okay. And then that leaves us thirty six hundred, which is great. Rondale, or no. we, I guess we, I guess your guy Dorch. You just no, we could do that. You're biased. Again. Hold on. You're bare. Okay. The options are. Oh, uh, Khalil Shakir, we already have Justin Watson. Oh, then we could up Trent, our... Trent Irwin, AT Perry. Yeah, so let's do uh, let's do Justin Watson and then upgrade the defense, I guess. Okay. Patriots against the Giants. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, that looks good to me. That came together pretty nicely, I think. Yeah. Full on. We got three three man Buffalo stack. One Eagle bring back. Makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, we got your guy Kyron in there. Chase Edmonds. So again, we need to, you know, keep our eye on the news because that's going to be contingent on Rashad White being out. Uh, but looks really strong if we get that news the right way. And then we'll do one more lineup and I'll let you start it off again. Choose the quarterback. Uh, let's do Minshew. Minshew magic. All right. We'll do that going, double. Going double. Okay. Pittman was down to 5,000. 4,800. Any Tampa bring back? 
I'm just thinking about how highly owned Chase Edmonds is going to be if uh, Rashad White gets rolled out. <clears throat> yeah, we'll do Evans. Okay, still 5180 left per player. That's kind of nice. Um, should we fill in the defense here? Uh, sure. You want to go Chiefs against Aiden O'Connell or something else? Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. We could stack it with Pacheco. Nice. Yeah. Good call. Uh, Fryer move maybe at the tight end just to mix it up. See what we could do. All right. 2,900. Price is right. You know, Back your boy Alex play. Baker would just play Jonathan Taylor on this lineup. We could. He fits. <laughs> fits just fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. Um, You want to add uh, Diggs or AJ Brown? Yeah, and see what we have. Yeah, we could do that. Let's go. Uh, we haven't played AJ Brown yet. All right, let's see if we can. So we'd have forty nine hundred, either forty seven hundred, or if we if we downgrade Brown to Diggs, we'd have forty nine hundred. I can't think of who's available there. So we could play Hunt if we played no. Diggs there. Uh Chase Edmonds again? I mean, he fits the stack. He does. He does fit the stack perfectly. Um, is there I'm just thinking the, you... the field's going to have like a million percent Chase Edmonds. But yeah, this, this is kind of kind of cheating for now. We might have to just like totally blow up all these lineups tomorrow. Yeah. We'd probably just do some 2v2s, take out Chase Edmonds, one of the more expensive players, and yeah. adjust from there. Like we'd probably, if the 2v2 in this one, we'd probably get rid of Edmonds and Brown and just maybe move, move Ed, uh, Edmonds up to Jonathan Taylor or go back to your guy, Kyron, maybe. Um, who I keep calling him your, I like Kyron too. Like, I, think he's a, I think he's a great play this week. We are in agreement there. Um, but do you want to upgrade anybody here? Do we want to upgrade to, uh, is there somebody we like better than the Chiefs for 3,500 or less? Yeah. Um, All right. Let's uh, let, let's let's make this diff more difficult on ourselves. Uh, you want to okay. do Devonta instead of AJ Brown, and then see uh, what we can do at running back instead of Chase Edmonds. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Let's do uh, Devonta. And, oh, now we can fit Kyron perfectly there if we do. That. Hey, all right, I like that. All right, so we're just we're playing Kyron in all of our lineups. Uh, we, I mean, he's playing. We we got away from uh, the unknown with Chase Edmonds for one, so that's good. All right, so our week for for our three lineups hinges on uh, Kyron Williams pretty pretty heavily here. Um, I think I better I better wrap up and get to my NBA. Oh, show, that's so right. Uh, do, do, I mean, if, if you have one more that you think you have, like you have an idea for the start to a build that you want to do, we, we I, I have an more. idea. I have an idea. All right. If you let, let's do, let's do one more then since we've got the idea already here, let, I just want to build a balanced team. Like, I don't think there's going to be a lot of balanced lineups this week. Okay. Um, what about, so tank Dell. For sure. Okay. Or or Nico. Honestly, you could pick it. It's not a huge deal. Um, you made it sound like a great Nico spot, and he's going to get lower ownership. All right, you, you go ahead. Yeah, that's my guy. All right. Well, the same thing. Pittman or Downs. Uh, let's go with Downs. I feel like you made great cases for both of them. So let's let's build a lineup around two of the players that you made great cases for. <clears throat> So I like doing this. I like just kind of getting my guys in and then seeing what happens from there. <clears throat> you want to do, all right, pick between Kyron and Derrick Henry. We've already done Kyron and all of them. So I'm going to go to Henry for this one. Okay. Now, what about Ramondre? You didn't seem like you're super excited about him, but 5,800 against that Giants defense. Yeah, I don't think so. Or Jerome Ford. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. All right. You're gonna, uh, you, you can you, do you, Ford. You, like, I'm, I'm okay with Ford. Do you want to give me two options and then I choose between them? Or do you yeah, let's, let's keep doing that. Let's do, um, all right. 
uh, Khalil Shakir or uh, Dalton Kincaid? Ooh. Let's go Kincaid. Okay. Mm. You want uh you want to start fitting in chalk, I guess? Because I feel like we're yeah. unique enough. I mean we could fit Jonathan Taylor in here. I think it would make sense in this lineup. And I don't know that we've played him yet, have we? No. Yeah. Let's let's play him. Okay. Um we didn't go Pittman, but we already have downs in there, so I think we skipped past Pittman. Um I'm trying to remember who was chalky. Well, I guess now maybe we should we should think about the stack. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, we could go. We have not. Played. What about Kyler McBride? We could. Do. I was going to say Kyler. Yeah, that, I like that. that. A lot of sense. So we're going double tight end for this one, but we're I not going to keep it in double like you know mid mid tight ends. Hey, uh, did, that was that. Of- that's what won last week, right? Kincaid McBride. Oh, I think is it yeah, is it exactly that? I think that you might be right about that. Um, we could go, do we want to pair our defense with either of our like Tennessee or, uh, or indie defense? I like Tennessee. Yeah. That's a good call. Cause that's the whole bet on, on Henry, in my opinion. And then we have 5,200 left over, um, Deontay Drake, London. Not like my favorite range here, but we could go Deontay bet on bet on the volume again. Who, who's yeah. your preference there? Uh, I, I, I think I would, uh, take out, maybe, maybe take out Kincaid and then, uh, try again and put McBride in tight end. Yeah. We could do, right. um, Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk. We can do, um, Rashid Shahid, Deontay Evans. Shakir. What about what about are there any mini stacks that look interesting? Mike Evans would be a mini stack. And do do you want to do any other Arizona players as part of our Kyler stack? Or are we just doing straight up to Trey McBride? I think it's I think it's McBride gets 10 catches and okay. 75 yards, and Kyler has two rushing touchdowns. Okay. So uh That's sorry, you, it feels like who who are the others that you were just throwing out? I know you said oh uh, I guess I guess yeah. um I would play Kyron in the flex to give us that bring back. I, I, you might not need one, to be honest. Yeah, you don't need it. Um, but how much is it. Mike Evans? Because he, he also works as a mini stack if we wanted to. Mike Evans, 7,400. So that leaves us, we would have to play a min price. We could play Justin Watson once again. Yeah, I think he's Juju. fine. Justin Watson. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes receiver who had 11 targets last week. Boom. In in a great spot against Las Vegas too. Okay. Yeah. Single stack with a bring back. All right. Nice. Oh, wait. Do we have, we didn't, we didn't end up playing Kyron, did we? So no bring back, but that's fine. I mean, we could swap. We could do a swap, but yeah. No, I think, I think this is good. Okay. All right. There we have it. One of these is going to win the Millie. Can't tell you which one it's going to be. Um, I know, I know which one it's going to be, but I'm not going to wow. say it. Uh, so one of these is going to win the melee. All right, Scott, uh, I got to get to my basketball yeah. show. Any final words for the audience? No, thanks for thanks for tuning in, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Check out fantasypoints.com. Check out Stochastic. Yep, perfect. I think that we, we've right. got we, we've got discounts across the board. Fantasy Point Stochastic. We have uh, great deals going on right now so check out link in the description of this video you can find direct links to the actual deals for stochastic fantasy points i showed you earlier you just click on the fantasy points link there's that plans button uh, in the top right on fantasy points if you want to see what deals they have available as well but yeah you can find them all in the description of this video thank you guys very much for watching good luck this weekend